Welcome to Fire Breathing Kittens, a 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons podcast. We're joined today by Amonist. Hi, I'm Amonist. I'm a level 11 fighter with twin swords strapped to my back that glow a little bit. And my dog Rufus by my side. Pidge. Hello, I'm Pidge Beekman, a transfiguration wizard. I'm a Nuzlocke challenge character. And if I die for more than a minute, I'm dead for good. So let's hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> And Stephen. Hi, I'm Stephen Leostone. I'm a gnome paladin of the ancients. I wear a brand new full pla- golden full plate armor with a long pink scarf. And the only thing shinier than my armor is my smile. Aw, uh, hey, two gnomes. <laughs> yeah, gnome party. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we high five at the appropriate height. <laughs> I'm a half elf. I look down at you. Or sorry, not half elf. What elf? My goodness. Oh. <sighs> <sighs> So you're all in the Fire Breathing Kittens Guild Hall. The Guild Hall is a large building with a bar, a sitting area with wooden tables and chairs, and a wall with a cork board and job flyers posted. You're all sitting at a table, start of the day, had a bit of breakfast, chatting with people, people you've been on work, uh, on missions with, uh, people you haven't seen in a while, maybe. And there's a bit of, bit of a buzz in the air. There's been rumors going around uh, that... Something that Nikomoi hasn't seen in a while is back in town. And all of a sudden, Menir just passes by. So this tall, rocky figure that you've seen recently that's new to the guild. And just leans in and says, oh, have you heard? Apparently, Toad Choir is back in town. We haven't seen them in years, apparently. I've I've heard a bit about it. I, I don't have time to check this out right now, but... If if you're interested here, just just take this. And he passes you a small little envelope. Um RSVP size, if you've ever been to a wedding. Um it's teal and purple, all swirly together, and on one side where the seal is, uh the seal is made of wax that appears to be gold. And it has T and C stamped on it within the shape of a frog. Oh, so the choir is actually like a, to- a choir of toads. I had a bit of lore dropping here because it's something that the DM has decided you would know. <laughs> toad <Awesome>. choir. <laughs> toad choir is a, it's a mysterious guild. It's something that you would have heard of. It's somewhat of like a folk tale, I guess, amongst uh, amongst guilds, especially in Nicomoy, and uh, they're very elusive. They're Apparently, fa- they were apparently founded in uh, the Fey realm, so by the fairies. Uh, their tenets, you know, would be creativity, suspense of disbelief, curiosity, playfulness. They would be mostly nomadic. That's where the big mystery comes in with this guild, is that apparently their gu- guild hall exists in its own kind of pocket dimension thing. And they invite random people in every now and then by just having a seemingly mundane door lead into where they are. That's so cool. Yeah, sounds like my kind of people. So, like, I guess this is, like, an invitation? The the little envelope thing? You you, you have an envelope, and uh, uh, Meneer would have said before before walking off, I, I'm so sorry, I can't, I can't stay. Uh, I found this actually in my room, but I, I can't address it. I have another mission to go on. Uh, I'll see you soon. I Let me know how it goes. All right, bye, big guy. And, and I hug off. his I hug his knees before he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I mean, I guess I'll open the envelope. I'm I want to see what's inside. Absolutely, it's got gold wax. This ha- this has you all over it. Yeah, I love it. So I'll open it up. So you open the envelope, and there's just a bit of the description of Toad Choir, like I just gave, and uh, they say, well. It's been years now, and it's time again. Uh, find find a way to open the right door, and the only thing that's written on the bottom is, please make sure we're alerted when you come through. Hmm. Okay, so I guess we have to find the great door and find a way to alert them before opening it. So, what's in this envelope? It's just this, these instructions, I think. It says to open the great door and make sure we're alerted first. There's nothing else uh, in there? Is there something else in there, well, DM? 
like an address there, there there is not it just says make sure make sure we're alerted when you come through the door and uh again you you would know this just from general knowledge like people enter that guild hall by the the door appears when they pass a different one so like you could be going into your oh. room and uh, and the door will be there there okay. they, they just pop into the uh, the toad choir guild hall guild hall hmm I mean, they're pretty elusive and they're playful, so I, I wonder if this might be some sort of enigma or, like, a puzzle? Um, Maybe. Do we just... Make sure we're... Make sure there is we're a bit of there, there, there is a bit of buzz going around town, like Menir said, so... You might be okay. able to forage around for some more information if you need it. Hmm. So, would we know of any people in town who may be... Like, have dealt with the Fae before and fairies and would kind of understand how that puzzle would work. Because we want to make sure that we succeed at that puzzle so the door will open, right? So, do we do we know anyone who's been to the Fae Wilds or has dealt with some fairies? Um, I personally don't, but um, is there is there like a fairy embassy somewhere in town or something? <laughs> um, the consulate? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I've, I've, I'm still new to Nikomoi. We have killed a few fairies before. That's not going to help us here. <laughs> I have not. Um. No, I think that was your guy in the lab coat. Did I? I didn't kill any. Yeah, no. there were fairies attacked in in the in the candy cane forest. There was a candy cane forest. Oh, pixies! Yes. Yes, I was forced to murder those oh, by the plot. And I missed it. Uh -huh. There was no other way to advance. So They were monsters. They attacked. Uh um Still trying to figure out this puzzle here. I'm usually good at puzzles, and this one is uh it's a bit of a pickle. Um, you see um you see other people like side glancing around the guild hall. You've seen at least one other of these purple teal swirly envelopes uh so you know that other people have received them and some of them have been rushing out like they get it they they think for a moment and they they head out of the guild hall okay well i hate cheating at so can we chase after one of them yeah like i don't want to cheat but <laughs> if they're nowhere to, if they know where to go then we should follow them yeah let's do that are we all ready to go let's go yeah let's go <laughs> Uh, who rushed out of the guild hall? I did. And when? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so clunking with my big armor, I'll run after a monist. Clunk, 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 clunk. On the road again. Yeah. She's wearing no armor. She just walks outside, following people. I, I'm pretty sure Pidge is not chosen. She doesn't, she's not really a chosen one, but uh, <laughs> she wants to hang out. But she could still solve the puzzle. It's not about being chosen. It's about being clever enough to impress the fairies. Um, Pidge, roll an intelligence check. You can. It can be investigation if you'd like. Oh, I'm theoretically good at those. <laughs> well, with a two on the dice, that's eleven. <laughs> it's it's good enough. It's good enough. Um, you noticed while whilst you were all reading the uh, the invitation that. The words, um, please make sure we're alerted when you come through the door, were separate. So they were really, uh, they were separated from the rest of the text. They were lower and on their own. So you feel that that is a major part of it. And you can't help but wonder, well, how does, how is one alerted when other people pass through doors? Oh, <gasps> there's a doorbell. I'd like to do an arcana check. What are what are you looking for with the the arcana? So theoretically, non non transfiguration wizards have a spell called alarm that alerts them when someone enters an area. But I'm not. I'm a transfiguration wizard. I don't do that kind of magic. But I I did see it done once in uh, the they come at night adventure. I saw a Mary do it. So since I saw it done with my eighteen plus plus nine, so with the twenty seven, do I remember that a Mary did that that one time? Uh, you, you definitely remember it. And what comes to mind, though, is you're, you're comparing bits of information from what you saw, from what you experienced, uh, from your personal knowledge as well, and uh, comparing it to what you would know about, about fairies and about this guild in particular. And you can't help but think to yourself, 
Knowing that the door, when you open it, leads to a different space, most likely we're looking for, you would be looking for uh, something to transform the door or to make it open that door, that specific portal-ish doorway. So you feel it's more of an imbued object that would do this. Oh, like when you hold a key and then, uh, all right. Key-ish in factor, yes. All right. Uh, I share that there might be a key with my friends. Okay. Um. All right. So do we think that maybe... Possibly. We yeah. should not put this letter down. <laughs> maybe the letter is the key. It's possible. <laughs> that, that's that's what I think. Like, we don't have any other key than that little card there, so we should keep it. And, like, I'll make sure it's very, like, safely in my... I don't know if I have, like, a breast pocket in my armor, but that's where I'll put it. <laughs> You know, like... Like in a white dress-up shirt? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Like, or... Put in your armor? In yeah, the metal? I, mean, I have pockets in, on my pants, but I don't want to risk losing it, so I'll keep it close to my chest. Are you planning on losing your pants? Does it have little hinges? <laughs> you oh. never know what might happen. It's fairies. <laughs> so, um... All right, so we need to transform a door. Would Do we think that any door would work? Uh, Somebody... Somebody said doorbell. I said doorbell. Oh. I think there's going to be a doorbell. Maybe hidden it, somewhere it, that doesn't look like there should be one. It it feels like you're you're pretty you're pretty convinced that that doorbell is a is a good lead because it makes sense with the alert us when you come through the door. I oh that's a mm. I thought I might be able to find it with you know those spells that are allowed to that help us like see magic, but I didn't prepare that today so i can't help with that i'm so sorry guys <laughs> you're talking to the world's most useless wizard <laughs> you're not useless you're to awesome me. I, I can only do transfiguration spells so. some of them are really really you good you do quite a bit with that thank you um okay. i learned to disintegrate since we last hung out so that's a fun one um <laughs> i uh, don't know what that does yet um i have a Pretty good idea, but I hope I'll get to see it be used. <laughs> I hope you don't. <laughs> it's a little bit murdery. <laughs> okay, so the people that we followed that rushed out, um, yeah. do we still see them, like, run towards something in the street? Like, maybe they have an idea where their doorbell is? Uh, well, you see them, you would see them go out more, more like, into the square, into the street. Uh, one of them is holding the envelope. The other one seemingly, and... Uh, the, the, the magic users would recognize this. They're clearly doing a spell on top of it, and they're following a trail of sorts. Um, but oh. you see other people with similar envelopes out in the crowd doing something similar and following a different trail. So they're not all converging in the same direction. Some of these people are wrong. <laughs> or You're maybe kidding. the door can appear from anywhere. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, just to make sure that somebody's tested it once, the guild hall, like our own guild hall, do we have a doorbell to ring? Sure. Okay, so can I just try and, like, hold the envelope in one hand and just ring our own doorbell just to see what happens and make sure we've tried? I hold on to, apparently, your breastplate has, like, pockets and stuff. Can I Can I hold on to a bit of it as oh, if a of course. person's tugging a shirt? Okay, I'm just... If you get pulled through, I'd like to be pulled through as well as oh, you do this. Oh, right. That's I'll very, hold on that's to. Very right. Yeah, I'll grab I'll grab a monos belt, and with my other hand, I'll ring the ring the doorbell just to see what happens. You ring the bell. It chimes. Okay, that's a right. and, then, and then go through the door. Yeah, and well, like, can I open the door after? See what happens. You can try. I will try to open our own door. <laughs> You open the door to the uh, to the Fire Breathing Kittens Guild Hall after the bell is chimed. The I'm assuming it's wood. The the large wooden door would creak as it opens slowly to reveal Meneer standing in front of you, saying, <laughs> "Oh, um, ex excuse me, I was just going out." Uh, that's all right, Meneer. Thank you, and oh, I'll sorry. move aside so he can walk out. But best of luck, best of luck, and he waddles away. Ah. Uh. <laughs> I mean, someone had to try, right? You have to start with the obvious things. Yes. I'm glad you did it. Hmm. So I, I, I feel like, again, this, this card or flyer we have here is sort of the key. So what way do we have to get information from this piece of paper? Can we... Oh. Uh, 
a, a useful wizard would cast the identify spell, <laughs> but uh, I don't have that. Because I'm a transfiguration wizard. I'm a Nuzlocke challenge character, and I can only take transfiguration Ooh. spells. Um, Amonis goes to the kitchen and grabs a lemon, and then rubs the <laughs> lemon juice on the paper to see if any hidden words reveal themselves when changing the pH of the paper. <gasps> yeah, good job. So for you, you start rubbing the lemon onto the paper, and a very strange reaction starts to happen where... The, the purple in some areas becomes teal, and the teal in other areas becomes purple in different shades. And under the phrase that was separated, so make sure we're alerted, it says, find one of the bells that we've left. Oh, so, so there are bells to find. Okay. Okay. Can I have Rufus take a sniff at this thing and see if he can lead us in the right direction? Is tracking dog. Sure. All right. What uh, is is he going like on on physical scent? Uh, or is yes, this, uh, he is I typically sure going on scent and hearing. Okay, he can, can okay. also hear uh, bells. You can you can choose investigation or survival. Uh, that's going to be an investigation, and I believe I get advantage on that with Rufus's ability because of the smell. Yes, and hearing. All right, so my investigation. Oh, my investigation is minus one. Really. Jeez, I'm not good at this. Do you, do, do you want to? Yeah, mine is plus nine. <laughs> if your dog is using his perce- like her perception, that's what works with, with the smell. So you could try that. I don't know what my dog's perception number is. Or my perception is plus four. Uh, sure, we could do perception. Okay, yeah, sure. Is it, so there's two ways to do this. You could add your proficiency to your perception because Rufus is proficient in his nose. It's like a, having a thief's tools. Or you could get advantage on perception, which is uh, quite a lot more bonus than a plus four modifier. And the DM can rule it, or the DM can be like, your dog isn't here today. (laughs) You know, a variety of things. Whatever you want to do. Well, I rolled a six and a nine, so... It also might be a teleporting thing, in which case, scent trails don't matter. (laughs) But we do have to find one of the bells. Like, they have to have left bells around here. Well... Yeah. Regardless, uh, I show the paper to Rufus, and he sniffs it, and my total score on that is a 13, to see if he perceives any kind of trail or aura that he can follow. He would uh, he would indeed pick up a bit of a scent, which you can follow. So you start, you, you start following Rufus uh, through the crowd. He comes up to some people that already have envelopes, uh, so you're like, ah, no, that's not it. And he continues on. Uh, and eventually, actually, we'll start it right now. We'll start a skill challenge. <gasps> Here, I was afraid he was going to go to the kitchen for the lemons. <laughs> 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 I'm not that evil. So, um, just to set the table. Uh, skill challenge, we're going to do this. Uh, to win, you need six successes. And uh, there's no, like, ultimate failing ratio. I won't, like, just disable the rest of the story if you don't get X amount of things right. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and then you all died. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a- another bit that would have uh, that would have appeared over maceration with the lemon juice, um, and it, it adds on. Uh, you have you have until sundown, so it's valid for one day. Oh, oh. okay. And oh. for the sake of the skill challenge, there is twelve hours left until sundown. Okay, we can do this. That, we, and that works. I would just like you each to roll uh, initiative, just so that I can keep track of whose turn okay. it is. Sure. Nineteen. Nine. Twenty. Woo! Okay. I'm just gonna... Very rare anybody's faster than me. Yeah, yeah, I had to roll a 19 to get that, but... <laughs> I roll a 12 <laughs> to happened. get mine. <laughs> well, that's fine. I'm good at other things. <laughs> so you know, you know, you're looking for a bell um, that will eventually be attached to a door. Uh, you have you have a bit of a trail. You know, it's something magical in nature, something fey in nature, mm-hmm. and use whatever it is you want. Just explain to me what you're doing, uh, and we'll set the roll afterwards. What's the okay. scene that we're looking at right now? 
Well, you're in the city, so it's really yeah. bustling. You've been seeing more and more people with these envelopes running around. You've seen actually one or two of them rush by with a bit of a bell in their hand, but it looks more like a, almost like a jingle bell type of thing. So it's round and it has that, uh, that like opening. Uh, and it's roughly, roughly two inches in diameter. And they're, they're like, clearly, they're, like, trying to hide it as best they can, and they're running away with it. So you know that that's probably what you're looking for. Okay. <laughs> okay. <Good job. laughs> All right. Um, one thing that we didn't talk about yet, I do have the spell Find Steed. Um, would it be possible that maybe I've summoned my steed, like, the day before or something? So, like, because I'd already have the steed somewhere, and I'd like to be able to, like, get on her so I could, like, travel faster. The steed um, can have been stabled. All right, so I'll get to my steed. <laughs> I'll get to my steed. She's a gorgeous white horse with a, like a long golden mane and a horn, kind of like a unicorn, but it's a purple gem. Her name is Lady Diana. Uh, so I'll get on. So I'll climb on Diana very fast uh, and using her ability to run really fast. And also she's Fey, so maybe she knows things. Um, no, she wouldn't. But still, um, I'm gonna start galloping in the street, and I'm gonna try to go after one of the of the per of the people that we saw with one of those tiny little bells. Okay. And with my uncanny ability to make friends, I'll try to persuade them. Persuade them, just like, hey, buddy, I'm looking for one of those two. Um, where'd you find it? Do you think there's any more? All right, persuasion check. Awesome. Ooh, yeah, that's good. That's 18. <laughs> that is a success. So they, they just turn around. They, they look kind of shy. There's some of the some of the people, maybe the new people that you would have seen in uh, in the guild hall. So they're friendly. Uh, they have a friendly disposition with you to begin with. And they're like, um, well, we found this one actually lying around in an alleyway. Uh, we just, we, we used locate object as a spell. So that helped us find it pretty quickly. Um, uh, I'm sorry, though. No sharing. I, I really hope you find yours, though. That's okay. Thank you. And then I'll quickly gallop back to my buddies and tell them what they said. <laughs> no, I don't have that spell. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. No, there are other things. we No sharing. How dare they? I know, right? That's so, like, that's not friendly. Hmm. Hmm. But still, they told us about it. So they found a bell. Let's look for a bell. And I believe it's uh, my it turn? Be, yes, it would be a bonus turn. All right. So I'm going to use stealth, and I'm going to okay. stealth up behind the one that we just talked to that said no sharing. <laughs> <laughs> and I rolled a 19, and I get a plus 7, so 26. But what what are you trying to do, though? So you're using stealth. Are you trying to steal from them? Not yet. That's the next turn. Um, <laughs> but I'm just going to make wow. sure that I'm following them very closely and able to hear anything that they say or talk about as they think that they're unobserved. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a success. So you, you're, you're trailing them. And you're like being very nondescript in the crowd and you're very adept at like just moving people away from you to not make a sound and uh you you just hear them talking once it's like oh my god i can't believe we found it so quickly this is going to be great let's just tie it to the door of our room and i mean it's a doorbell so it can't be much more difficult than just opening the door and having it chime when we go through interesting i'm not near my friends so i can't tell them that right now but i file that away <laughs> yeah pitch didn't notice he went anywhere she's not very perceptive <laughs> me, ne me neither. <laughs> it is. It is thus unperceptive. Pidge's turn. Oh man, uh, I feel like there are other ways to get this than stealing from our friends. So, <laughs> being a wizard who studies books all day, I go to the magical library and I try to look this up. I have a plus nine to my arcana, Very so cool. I'm familiar with this library. I hang out here like all day, all the time. It's like my place. Everyone no, roll with libraries. advantage. <gasps> Yay! Because it's your place. <laughs> Good, because the first one was a five. So, <laughs> 21. <laughs> that's that's a success. Because I rolled a 12 the second time. <laughs> so you've been looking... And I tried to look it up. Great. 
so you've, you've been consulting a few different books. Uh, a couple of first ones didn't quite work out. You were looking too much in the, the magical sense. Uh, you end up saying, wait, this is probably a trap. Let's look at fairy stuff. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, they're jerks. <laughs> So you uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> you end up pulling out a book, and you actually find uh, you find two books. So you find one about fairies, and you find another one that's uh, actually um, you didn't expect to look there at first, but it was just like kind of like you're browsing through things, and inspiration struck, and you grabbed it, and it's just somebody recounting their alleged adventure with the Toad Choir Guild, um, mm. and they they mention in that how you know. The fairies are tricksters, and this is well known. But um, they 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 send out tons of these. Uh, you, they've heard about these bells before. They've used them in the past. Uh, they litter cities whenever they pop up with 142 of them, and only 142 people get the uh, get the clues. Uh, and it's really just a matter of what that person did. Is they just they found the bell. Uh, for some people it was lying around in an alley. For some people it was like right under their bed. Uh, it can be in a whole bunch of different places. And, um, they just tied it to their door. When they open it, that's when the magic happens and that's when the guild hall appears. Okay. So, you know, definitely it's a bell. Uh, it can be anywhere and it's almost like, almost like an Easter egg type of chase thing. Like you have to find a bell and there are hmm. only so many of them. All right. I share that information with Steven, who's with me. And then I try to share that information with Amonist. And I'm like, what? Where did Amonist go? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I, I don't know where he went. But um, just so we don't get separated even more, come with me. And then I'll pull her on Lady Diana, too. She's big enough for two small characters. so I definitely need assistance. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll pull her up. I'm strong enough. So the two don't want to see my athletic score. <laughs> So the two gnomes on the big horse, and I guess it's my turn for the skill challenge? It is neat. All right. Um, Lady Diana is a fae, and I think I kept the cardboard piece with me. So following a monist example, I'm going to try and get her to, like, uh, smell the fae magic. Like, she's from there, and I'm guessing she might be able to perceive or find some of these bells. So can I try an animal handling to help her do that? Sure. Might be stretching it. Okay. okay. I mean, try so it. I'll... Try it. <laughs> okay. You can do this, girl. You're awesome. Ooh, ooh, uh, 17. It comes just short. It was a good idea, but you can tell when, like, you're trying to guide her and you're showing her the envelope and Lady Di is just looking up at you like, uh, I'm a horse. Uh, I'm, I'm a fae, but I'm, I'm in horse form right now. <laughs> it's, okay, it's okay, Diana. You tried. And so you, she, she starts steering you through, uh, through, through different parts of the city, and she's really doing her best, and she really wants to please you. Um, but she leads you into a street where you're actually ambushed <gasps> by, uh, by three different people. Uh, so it's just a just a band of little thugs and they have uh they each have a marking on them that appears to be like a, a paw with claws and they're like ah you people and fire breathing kittens thought you got all the invitations but one of them is going to be for panther dander <laughs> and they panther try dander. <laughs> the list of rival so guild names i, is I know i'm on a golden horse called lady diana but i'm like panther dander that's a ridiculous name <gasps> Don't be mean. <laughs> they take offense to that, and oh no, <laughs> they will attack. <laughs> Great. So what we're going to do is just going to be a quick skirmish. Um, so we're going to follow the it's same. Gonna be we're going to follow very, the very same. Very quick. Uh, Stay on the horse. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So we're we're going to go with Pidge, since it was just a. As a bonus just action, a I cast Expeditious Retreat on Lady Diana, which Ooh. gives her. Um, as a bonus action on each of her turns until the spell ends. Oh, wait. Range is self. Hmm. It's a skill challenge. I'll allow it. You're on the horse. Oh, yeah. She's a, she's a mount, so she can just dash and disengage all, all, as much as she wants on my turn. Well, so. she. so if you can dash as a bonus action, that means that you can also move and then move. So it gives you like four times your movement speed, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what was her movement speed? Her movement is 60, but... Um, now it's 240. Okay. 
you want to not be in this location because we can do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I don't want to fight with these guys. Like, they're, okay. I mean, they're, they're criminals and I don't like them, but they don't need to be punished for this. And we don't have a lot of time. So when it gets to my turn and Diana will be able to act, um, I will get her to, I mean, she'll take her action to disengage and then just start using her movement to run away. Her very fast, uh, expeditious movement. <laughs> So, Which would be uh, six times three is 180 plus a disengage. Move dash. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot. Mm. It's quite fast. For comparison, Pidge can do 35. <laughs> so. That's fine. It's okay. We have a horse for that. So are we able to run away from these brigands? Uh, before before your turn, though, it will be, uh, it will be the thug's turn. Uh, oh, dang. So they're gonna swipe. Uh, they're gonna swipe two at Steven and one at Pidge, because they saw her cast magic. Um, so for Steven, it'll be a twenty-three and a twenty-one to hit, and for Pidge, it'll be a twenty-two to hit. Oh, yeah, that hits. My AC is eleven. Hit. Both <laughs> hits. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's gonna be. Uh, it's going to be six damage for Pidge and twelve bludgeoning damage for uh, for Steven. Ow! And then it is your turn. Okay, well, I still get my action before. Yes. Yeah, I still get my... Oh, I I keep thinking I have some stuff prepared and I didn't. So I have... I wanted to command him to apologize, but I can't do that. So I'll just get Diana to... Um, yeah, I'll get Diana to disengage and run away because we don't have a lot of time. And I want to ready an action. Uh, if somebody attacks, I want to use dodge to defend ourselves with the shield as we run away. Sure. You you managed to run away uh, from them. I mean, they they were on foot, and Lady Diana's <laughs> speed is now 180. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you lose them pretty swiftly in the crowd. And once you get out of that little alleyway, that little like shady street, the you can tell that they're probably not going to bother following anyway. Uh, they don't want to. Okay. They don't want to do that kind of uh, have that kind of behavior out in public. Awesome, mm, and I'll tell. I see uh, how you are. Yeah, and I'll tell Diana like, "Okay, girl, let's find a monist. Go." And so uh, you could tell though that 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 this little uh, unfortunate encounter has cost you a bit of time. That's okay. It happens. Yeah, and then it will be a monist's turn. All right. So I've been uh, following those people who wouldn't share their bell with us, and <laughs> I am going to pick up a small rock. Fellow guild members. Eh, I'm feeling trickstery. It's fine. <laughs> they can find a new one. And I am going to use sleight of hand. I'm going to bump into them, swap the rock with their bell, and say, oh my goodness, excuse me, I didn't see you there. Okay, good. I thought you were going to knock them unconscious or something. No, sleight of hand. Okay. And I rolled a 17 for that, and I have a plus 12, so I believe that is... Yeah, I know. <laughs> DM face. I believe that's a 29. <laughs> yeah, DM face palm. <laughs> uh, 20, sadly, that's... No, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you actually... Yeah, you. they're, they're coming up to, the, up to the guild hall, the Fire Breathing Kittens guild hall. So you could tell that you find that moment when they're like, okay, we're finally getting to a safe space. And you take advantage of that moment of vulnerability in your guildmates to bump into them and swap the bell with an equally sized and weighted rock. <laughs> I think and you have to name the person you did this to. Which guild member did you take the bell from? Give, uh, I, I, will, I will let you give them a name. Oh. No, no, like one of your fellow players. <laughs> yeah, oh. who did I do this to? Um, I mean, do we know who it was? You said it was a fellow guild member, and you you know them all, so go ahead and name one. Mm, Amiri. <laughs> she, she will forgive me. Oh, we'll find out. Ah, <laughs> uh, unexpected drama. I love it. <laughs> you uh, you now have a bell, uh, and you are tentatively concealed in front of the guild hall. Uh, and you see Emiri walk in uh, to be deceived later on when she gets to her room and tries to hang a rock atop her door. And it will be Pitch's turn. I am 
currently on Lady Diana, holding on tight to the golden armor of Stephen as we gallop down the city road. Mm-hmm. Um, from this position, <laughs> um, my goal is to use the investigation skill, okay. but I'm currently on a horse and I'm galloping. Investigate quickly. We, we've run away. I can get her to slow down if you want to like look for a monist. Yeah, I guess what I'll do is use that to find a monist. So okay. I see a person crying, and it's Amiri. And I'm like, Amiri, what's wrong? And Amiri says, Sniffle, you know, I found a bell, and I... I had it and I was walking. I'm like, oh, well, where were you walking? And she goes, I, I had it. And then I was in the guild hall. And it was while I was in the guild hall that, that something happened. And now I have a rock. And then with my investigation check, I'd like to deduce that it was a monist. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> That's awesome. That sounds more like insight. I'm just saying. 18 plus 9 is 27. So I see a trail of puppy paw prints leading upstairs where Rufus, the large dog, I guess. So they're large prints. And and I see that someone went upstairs. I deduce that it was a monist. I comfort a Mary and I don't think I tell her. And I investigate those paw prints going upstairs. Yeah, and you're you're able to you're able to find a monist where he is uh, tentatively tentatively hidden bell in hand. Or a pocket. He's probably already tying the bell to the door and has forgotten us. So I (laughs) (laughs) use a skill challenge to reconnect with him. That is not true. I was planning on doing an acrobatics to get out of here with it, to to meet up with you guys. All right. Uh, So just just that we all understand where where everybody is. Uh, From my understanding, a monist had stolen the bell when he was still outside of the guild hall. I thought so too. And I thought we were ne- like near the door. Yeah, because he would have st- he would have okay. stolen it when like just as Amiri was going in, type of thing. So all, all this right. could, can have could have happened, obviously. Uh, but just she like, got in the right guild outside. hall, realized it wasn't there, got She's... a glass of milk, and started crying into it. <laughs> oh, th- yeah, pretty <laughs> much. This poor Amiri person. Oh, oh. She's a tough milk. cookie. She'll get over it. <laughs> <laughs> She'll beat you. <laughs> she might. She'll beat you with the wrath of Coddle. <laughs> she might. <laughs> yep. Um, I, I guess I buy her a cupcake. I put it on my tab and I say, I'm sorry, Mary. And then I follow the paw prints upstairs. All right. So you've you've all reconvened uh, upstairs. And uh, well, it's it's not six successes, but we'll stop the skill challenge here because it just makes sense. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I wanted to use my athletics to help Pitch get down from the horse if we needed one more skill. Oh, but. I have a, a feather fall badge. Nods. <laughs> <laughs> What's a feather fall badge? You can just throw yourself off anything and it'll catch you? Pretty much. I can throw myself off anything and like a feather just kind of sway gently to the bottom. It's a... Yep. That's awesome. It's a cool item. I got it from the person who plays Azreen and, you know... So nice. this would have all taken uh, taken a few hours, a lot a lot less than uh, than you would have expected. Um, so you still have a bit of time before uh, before the magic would wear off, as was uh, ominously deciphered by the lemon juice. So you would have uh, in total, let's see, you, you would have nine hours left before sundown. You have plenty of time to do what? Okay, I mean, I don't. I'm already ready for adventure, so. Um, I mean, I don't think it's a race, but we shouldn't waste time with this bell since we have it. So should we just try and hang it to a door and open it? I think so, because if, 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 uh, Amiri comes up here, we're going to have to give it back. <laughs> All right. So let's do this right, right away. And by the way, like the part about a monist, like stealing a bell, Steven chose not to hear that. <laughs> just, just st- stealing is wrong, but he's also very excited. So I probably just uh, guided you along the paw prints and like was like, "Oh look, we're reconnecting with the monist." Because I don't out people. What a coincidence! <laughs> yeah. Oh, he found one. Where have you been all day? <laughs> so, Amonis, uh, we're too short. So, would you mind hanging it to the top of the door, please? And then we can try and open it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Gnome problems. 
Do I do I need to roll any kind of check for this? No, not to okay. die about. <laughs> All right. I wait, where just just for my 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 personal knowledge though, like you're doing this in your room. Where are you currently? What door are you using? Do we have lodgings at the guild hall? I thought we all had our own individual lodgings. Pitch has an apartment. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's find a broom closet and hang it over the door to that. <laughs> um, could we maybe try and use like a door outside? Like maybe if we have like a little shed in the yard or something. So that way Lady Diana could come with us. Um, if it's the Fae Wob, maybe she wants to, or like the Fae Guild, maybe she'd like to come. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah. There, there's also the, there's the stable door. Yeah. Oh yeah. Stable door. That's fine. Let's do this. All right. So we go out back and we find the stable. It's a very large expanse of a building. There's room for a lot of horses and other assorted mounts here. And, uh, giant trees. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That. And there's a large, uh, double-sided barn door. So first we have to close it because it's normally open. And then... Uh, I, it's a little tall for me to reach, so I'm going to pick Pidge up and have her tie it (laughs) up, up, up above our heads. All right. I only weigh 40 pounds. It's not hard (laughs) to lift me. Yep. Straight up there. I hand you the bell. Do I have like a nail and a hammer or am I just like... Oh, I have some of that. Yeah, I have my leather workers tool. So I'm assuming there's like a little nail or a hammer or something in there. I mean, they're, they're like... Leather workers will say, like, for for the sake of argument, that it would be like a, a tiny little hammer and like itty bitty nails, like uh, yeah, like in shoes. Would use for shoemaking, yeah. But yeah, uh, it exactly. will work. It will work. It's soft enough wood. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. For punching holes in leather, stamping. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um. I also have one of those. <laughs> so with no problem at all, there's a nail sticking out of the top of the doorway and i put the bell on it all right right. i lower pitch back down and i i I drop her towards the end just to watch her float oh no that's once a day (laughs) oh uh i just fall i'll just take it ah you only fell like a foot you're fine (laughs) great thanks a monist i'm sorry i thought you would float sorry (laughs) um and then all right what do you say guys I'm actually going to touch my necklace and eat a few good berries and recover my lost HP. So I'm going to use one of those. So I have extra. I have four extra. Do you want some, Stephen? Oh, that's actually really clever. I didn't think about the fact that I got hit by a bandit before. Um, <laughs> it was ma- a guild member. <laughs> could, could we maybe short rest before we open that door? Just like take a minute to like rest and have a snack? I guess. You have nine hours. All right, so we'll take one of those nine hours if everybody's okay with it, and I'm going to roll some hit dice. Yeah, I didn't need to use berries <laughs> Well, if we're short resting. You recover it at, at, on a short rest, don't you? So I rolled two d10s in my hit dice, and that brings me back to full. Sure. Yeah, it is per short rest, so they are recovered. Yeah, talk to plants is the long rest. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Um. just because right, it's so- been established... Uh, a monist, could you just roll a just a flat d20? No, this is oh, no. whether or not a Mary finds us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 14. Okay, you're fine. Okay. All right. You take your little snacky snacks and your picnic in front of the barn door with a stolen bell and uh, <laughs> no one comes in back. Yeah, make, making sure that nobody uses it. And once we're ready, let's let's open it. All right. Who's opening the door? What's happening? Well, you found the Bellamonas, so you should get the owners. Please, uh, please open it, and we'll kind of all, all hang on each other, just in case we need to touch or something. Are you grabbing onto my like, belt again? Yeah, I'm gra- I'm holding onto your belt really tight. You minx. And, and, uh, <laughs> and I'll also, like, I'll hold Pidge's hand with my other arm, and I guess Lady Diana will have to, like, I don't know, touch my head or something with her nose so she can <laughs> touch us, too. I can hold onto her, yeah. All right, cool. All right. Amonis tightens the uh, leather drawstrings on his pants and uh, slides open the barn door. You you open the barn door, and the second you start pulling on it, it bumps the bell, which chimes. And those of you that would be uh, more sensitive to magic, like you would feel 
a bit of the reverberations. You would feel a bit of those waves uh, doing something uh, magical. So it's like it's having an effect other than just regular sound. And as you're pulling the barn door open, it's just not the barn that's on the other side. It's a hallway. Um, oh, cool. Do, 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 do. <laughs> It's pretty. It's pretty <laughs> dimly lit. It's uh. It's a hard. It's a hardwood floor. Pretty dark hard, hardwood floor. The walls are green, but like a, like that velvety, deep green, almost like old antique uh, banker chairs type of thing. Uh, and there is a variety of different uh, of different paintings on the wall, all very, uh, very Renaissance esque, um, impressionist. Uh, I'm thinking a lot about. Um, that uh, that particular one, uh, I think it's from uh, Midsummer's Night Dream, the depiction of Midsummer's Night Dream, where you see like the fairy lounging and all of that. Ooh, sounds like my kind of party. Let's go in there. Okay. All right. Uh, I, I Mona steps carefully forward, dragging forward the rest of the party. <laughs> <laughs> and a horse. But you don't have to drag me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nobody needs to be dragged. I'm super excited. So I'll just open the door and like, as I walk in, I'll be like, hi, is anyone home? We found the bell. <laughs> you, uh, you, you walk in and as you pass the threshold, the door closes behind you. And what's left when you turn around is more of this green velvet wall. Okay. So let's hope they have a way back. That's fine. <laughs> and uh, after... After you say you you scream your hello, is there anybody there? Uh, you can you can hear in the distance just a bit of. Uh, oh my! Is that laughter? <laughs> That's laughter. Amonis walks forward, gently humming past the point of no return under his breath. <laughs> <laughs> so you're All walking right. forward. The hallway is very straight. It's pretty narrow, but it's not like uncomfortably narrow. Um, so you, you can't be completely side by side, uh, two people, but you can, uh, you, you, like, you don't have to, have to squeeze by any means. Uh, it, it leads, it's very one way and you can tell that, uh, this is clearly one of the effects of the extra dimensional space where, uh, things aren't necessarily built. They are kind of created as you move on, um, purposefully so you can imagine people living here would always have whatever they need on hand type of uh, type of situation and you walk down and you get to a to a single door which is just a wooden door with a uh, a knobby little handle um it's very nondescript really it's the only one there hmm and on it is just a little tiny um tiny nameplate, and it just says private. Oh, well, if it's private, we shouldn't try and open that. Um, <laughs> Maybe it means it's like a military thing. <laughs> Saving Private Ryan. I don't know. Yes. We're privates now. Yeah, entry level. Um, should we... <laughs> I'm polite. Should we try and knock? Sure. Okay. Amona I'll, steps uh... back. <laughs> Alright. Oh, gosh. I mean, that's that's my job. I'm the protecting protective person so i'll stand in front i'll raise my shield a little bit just in case <laughs> and i will very gently and politely knock on the door there's there's no response to the knock you could swear you hear a bit of like mumbling from behind it but it's it's very nondescript and it's so so faint and you can f hear it's almost like it was above you you can hear more of the <laughs> But a little more, uh, like it's it's more vivid now. It's not off in the distance. <laughs> They'll never get it, <laughs> oh. guys. I, I I think that door's a joke. I think they're making fun of us. Hmm. hmm. Uh, Pidge would like to investigate the corners and crevices and like paintings. Are these paintings secured to the wall? You know. I, I want to look around the room and get clues. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Find detail clues. Non-natural 20. Oh, nice. Uh, and just to guide my response, you're looking for clues regarding the door or? No, I'm not focusing on the door at all. I'm not trying the handle. Okay. I'm not investigating the door at all. We okay. knocked on it and people laughed at us. So instead, I'm looking for things like, you know how people put keys under doormats? Mm-hmm. Or they make safes behind paintings, or like 
you know, non-obvious hidden compartments in the room. Okay. Not the door at all. Yeah. Uh, well, you, you start fiddling around with the paintings. You you backtrack a bit in the hallway. Um the the wall you can tell that the wall isn't uh it's it's not painted it's actual like velvet stuck to the wall type of thing oh um you lift this has got to be hard to clean that <laughs> would uh, be terrible i mean they're fairies though <laughs> press oh, yeah, the digitation. Press the digitation i don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> other people have pressed it wait no i think i do too yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh you you see like uh, all these um all these different paintings and one of them depicts like this very, it's very pretty, uh, what you would expect from a, a fairy queen type of person. Um, you see like on the bottom it's written, uh, Titania. There's another one that seemingly, uh, is depicting, it looks like it's the same person, but it's very, it's very shadowy. It's very dark. Uh, and on that one, it would be written queen of air and darkness. Um, you see one that catches your attention uh, is you see one painting next to the door. Uh, I'd say like a, we'll say like fifteen feet away from the door in the hallway, um, which is a, uh, a a staunchy short little fellow, uh, an older man with uh, with pointed ears, but the painting like you can't put your finger on what race it would be although considering the context and considering the other paintings like your mind just goes well it's, it's just a, it's another phase so uh what it looks like is more or less relevant um he's he's wearing uh he's wearing brownish robes so it's uh it's, it's very like his garments aren't as flattering as others were uh and his he's very round too uh, almost unnaturally round so he's not fat he's like literally round um with like stubby little limbs coming out and uh on the bottom of that it's just written heckler oh and you could swear you could swear that you saw the eyes move at some point can we look behind the painting by all means so it looks like a Botero painting? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh. Art knowledge. Okay. <laughs> he paints very round people. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, these eyes are moving. What's the name of that painting you said? The Heckler. Oh, well, that makes sense. He was making fun of us. Oh. Um, Amonis goes to reach for it, and I'm like, well, he might want to talk to us. He might not want to flip his painting around. Okay, we can try to talk to him first. I say to the painting... You want to hear a good joke? <laughs> okay, I'm all ears. <laughs> oh, it laughs. Okay, I got it. I say to it, knock, knock. Who's there? Anita. Uh, Anita who? Anita, drink a water, so please let me in. <laughs> I burst out laughing. This is the best joke I've ever heard. This was just my trap to get it to talk to us. <laughs> now we have evidence it's alive. <laughs> well... It's laughing. You can't tell if it's actually coming from the painting or not. The sound doesn't seem to be emanating from the painting per se. Uh, it still feels like it's coming more from above type of thing. It's like, oh. Oh. <laughs> I've seen a bunch of different people fail at this. Mm. Uh, I guess we'll see what kind of try you give. Good joke, though. <laughs> oh, great. Okay, but the eyes in the painting are moving. Okay, but well, it's not you could talking swear. to us. Like, you don't ever okay. see them move, but it's one of those situations where, you know, like, you turn around, you look at something else, and you come back, and, like, the eyes are, like, painted in a different direction type of thing. Oh. It's not, it's oh. not like that cartoon situation where, like, you see cutouts and you see eyes. Hmm. Now can I look behind the painting? Have we tried just, like, touching the painting? Go see ahead. What happens? Go ahead. Touch him. Yeah. yeah, I will. I'm... I'm resistant to magic, so like if they try something else, should be okay. Um, everybody stand back, or actually stand back, but stay close-ish, like within ten feet. Wink, and then I'll just like touch the frame very gently. You touch the frame, and from all around you, you hear the sound of a kazoo starting to uh, oh, starting to play a kazoo. Uh, I could not make that sound with my mouth. Uh, it's yeah, like, like a, a staunchy little instrument that looks like a flute, oftentimes given to children. Very, oh, the one that used. amplifies humming. Yeah, pretty. But oh, not a you. harmonica. Okay, no. got it. There we go. Uh, so you just hear that, and poof, 
on top of your shoulder appears floating, like not sitting on it. Uh, the same type of character as depicted in the painting. And he starts laughing. <laughs> Ow. I guess I'll tag Hello, along with you, you now. <laughs> oh, damn. So if I had touched the other one, I would have had Queen Titania on my shoulder. That's... I'm not complaining. It's a new friend. Sure. Pidge edges towards the pretty picture, not the Queen of Darkness one. <laughs> and touches that's, that one. That's what I was just thinking. <laughs> you get the Queen of Darkness, let's be real. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> Amonist and I look at one another and both reach our fingers out to touch the painting at the same time, sharing a sly grin between us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah. You both let's touch both it? both touch the, the pretty queen one at the same time. Queen Titania. Okay. And... Uh, as you as you touch it and you you hear again like the the, the heckler is nonstop, <laughs> aww, and the the private symbol from the door just disappears. Oh, oh, oh! Well, next time I guess, and he disappears. Ugh, that was a good sound yeah, effect. Yeah, Thank I you. was very impressed. <laughs> Is it because we touched it at the same time so Titania couldn't appear? Or hmm. Pidge touches it alone. <laughs> I still want a Titania. <laughs> Darn. It, it it does nothing. After after the uh the the nameplate on the door disappeared, uh, apparently okay. touching the painting does nothing. Hmm. Okay, well okay. if it's not private anymore, should we try the door now? Yeah, let's open it. Okay, you go, Amonist. All right, Amonist reaches out and opens the door. Uh, you open the door, and you can walk in. The room is seemingly dark for now. Like, you open the door, and you don't see fully in it. Uh, so you just see, like, it's like if you would uh, see in, like, a cartoon or whatever, where you see, like, that circle of light around uh, around the, f the the floor when you open the door, but you don't see, like, actually into it. And dark vision does not help. Nope. Ah, oh, interesting. Any, yeah. any of you guys know how to cast the light spell? You are making me feel real inadequate today. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I I can see in the dark pretty well. Can we can we see with our dark visions, or we no? Nope. Should, should we have more? Oh, okay. Um. Well, if we can't see in that darkness, I'm not. I have a torch in my dungeoneer's pack, but I'm not sure it's gonna pierce through magical darkness. But I can try. You know who can pierce magical darkness? Not you. And Mary. Uh, oh, well. <laughs> we, we should have brought her with us. That would have been the nice thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> you hear uh, you, you hear again? <laughs> I guess it's a shame you stole the bell. <laughs> oh, we're being punished. Be Wait, what? Stole the bell? <laughs> hush, hush. He knows nothing. He knows nothing. <laughs> Steven knows nothing. Oh, now he does, though. Yeah, we're going to have to talk about that later, young man. And I'll... I'm um, older than you. Shh. And I'll light up a torch. Does okay. the torch pierce the darkness? It does not. Okay. That's what I thought. Uh, maybe magical light would help. I draw the, the sword on my back w uh, with the yellow jewel in the pommel and speak its action word to light it up with, like... Y glowing yellow electrical energy. Now, where can oh, we see right. into this place? So you present you present your sword to the to the to the darkness, and it doesn't light up the space. But you do see letters start to form a message behind where you had opened the door, and it just says, "How will you know what's in if you never walk in?" Oh, okay. I take out my clockwork purple frog. I wind it up. With a, like, it's got one of those butterfly winders. Mm -hmm. I turn it a few times and I set the clockwork frog down on the ground and it hops forward. Awesome. And then it hops forward. And then it hops forward. And uh, then it dies? No. Question mark? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, it goes in and then the room starts to appear. Like, the magical darkness starts to fade somewhat. Uh, it's what seems to be, like, a 30-ish... Uh, square foot room uh, with a, a hole right in the middle. Uh, oh, I snatch up the frog before it reaches the hole. <laughs> and on the other side, 
where there would be a door is just a doorway and bars about an inch apart. Hmm. I wonder if anybody hmm. can cast gaseous form. That I can do. <gasps> See, I'll always make you but... feel bad. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and you're nice to your friends when they're in person. <laughs> I guess. So there's a hole in the middle of the room and there's a doorway with bars about an inch apart. Do we want to investigate the hole or the bars? I mean, we can definitely take a peek at the hole. Just like look down and try to see what's what would be at the bottom. Can we see? If this is anything like Zelda, the bars will open when we do whatever needs to happen with the hole. Ooh, so what's true. Zelda? Yeah, the boss fight is going to happen when we defeat the boss. We can get the chest and go through the door. Yeah. Yeah. You uh, you take a quick glance, like top right, and there's like a tiny little balcony, and. Atop, like, in the balcony appears the heckler once again. <laughs> oh, him again. Hi. I think our DM just likes making that laugh. You can say your passage is barred. <laughs> oh, yes, it is. That's a good one. <laughs> and he starts rolling around, and he's like that, that rolly and, like, flailing type of laughter. Botero style. I bet he's the perfect size and shape to get pushed down this hole. Do you think that's the answer here? I I don't want to be... I mean, he's... That sounds pretty evil, man. <laughs> yeah, like, he's annoying, but I don't really want to hurt him. I don't think he'll be fine. I'm just saying... Good question. How big is the hole? It is 10 feet in diameter. Okay. So it's bigger than the little heckler person. It is definitely bigger than the little, like, six-inch okay. across heckler person. And, and no. I don't know if I missed the the answer, but uh, if I take a little peek inside the hole, like, are we able to see kind of what's going on in there, or is it just pure darkness? Uh, no, it's about it's about ten feet deep. Ooh. Okay, and there's, like, there's a floor at the bottom? There's something? Yeah, there's, uh, there's you could tell there's, like, a little floor at the bottom. Uh, it's just, like, gray stone-ish. Okay, no, like, jagged spikes or something. Okay. Nope. Hey, Clockwork Frog. I wind it up <laughs> and I send it down into the hole. So it hops, hops, whoop, falls in. You hear a bit of a thud when it reaches the bottom. And uh, it starts, like, flailing. It's, it's its little mechanical legs are, like, trying to trying to continue moving forward, but it's on its back now. Okay. Is anything attacking it or eating it? Nope. All right. Hmm. Let's Amonis, go. What do you think we should do that doesn't involve killing our friends? Uh, Amonis is it's, it's only ten feet deep. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'll I'll risk it. Um, Amonis, being the very dexterous and agile person that he is, gingerly hops down and in, into the pit. Okay. Parker, parkour down. Uh, make a just make either a dex save or an acrobatics check. Okay. Uh, I believe that's a plus seven. 17 plus seven, 24. You're definitely fine. You know what? Pidge is going to stand on the edge, turn around, and say, trust fall. You going to catch me? Yeah, I, I hope so. Am, am I going to have to roll for it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I trust you. I'm going to... Rebuilding the strength in the group. <laughs> oh, is this a sleight of hand for grabbing her out of the air? Uh, no, I'd say it's either, uh, you can make an athletics check for this. It's a plus six. I trust you. 20, not natural. <laughs> That's perfectly fine. <laughs> I, like, tilt on the edge, hands crossed on my chest, and I just fall backwards. I grab her out of the air, and then hold her up Lion King style. <laughs> <laughs> You can you can hear once again the heckler. <laughs> what a show! <laughs> I trust you. Good. Keep in mind, you might have to fly us out of here. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, can we look around at the floor of this um, pit a little bit more in detail? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, go ahead and make either a investigation or perception check. Okay. Would that be my turn? <laughs> I have one skill. <laughs> um, I have a plus four. What do you have? 
plus nine. Oh yeah, you make it. You can you can you can do it with advantage, Pidge, since you're you're both doing it together, so he's helping you. Yes, assist. Yay, the help action. Okay, eighteen. So the floor. Is, what were you using? Perception or investigation? Investigating. Okay. For fine details. So you're looking at the floor, and it's very. It's just like non-polished rock. Um, you're looking at it, and you, you realize like the, the floor is very nondescript. It's very. It's almost mundane in nature, but you can't help but feel this space shouldn't be here in a sense like something isn't adding up you're looking at uh the way uh the, the way the floor is made and the way like the walls seem very uh it's just blackness basically so there's no actual like there's no stone there's no wood there's nothing up against the wall it's just like some sort of black it's like we're in a video game force. and we crashed into a glitch space that wasn't supposed to be there almost and you you're getting like the the inkling mm. feeling that there's something there's something else about this hole Steven, join us. Um, I mean, I I can jump down, but I don't know if Amonis wants to catch me, and I'm, like, clunking my heavy armor up to the edge. <laughs> I'll be good. Okay, you're ready, and I will jump down. I reach up to catch him. Yeah, make another athletics check. Okay. Another gnome. So this is uh, probably weighs pretty close to what I do, right? Oh, I wait what you do, but I have my heavy armor on top of it. Like, I'm still, like... <clears throat> Interesting. Yeah. Um, rolled another 14. So still not natural 20. Yeah, okay. You, you catch Steven, but this time a bit more of a <gasps> as he, he lands in his full plated force. <laughs> yep. I, uh, I, I I try to hide that as best as I can, and I look down at him with my arms, give him a wink, and say, I got you. Ooh, <laughs> thank you, Amonist. And I land on my feet. All right. I point out that the darkness looks odd. The Walls are blackness. Hmm. What do you think, Stephen? Hmm. I mean, I know we're dealing with fairies, so there must be a lot of illusion magic floating around. Um, don't know what I can do to deal with that. Can't oh, if it's an illusion, we can test it with the frog. See if it actually hits the wall or if it keeps going. I was just going to touch it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was going to touch it too. Like, let's let's test oh. it. Okay, okay. I, my friends are reaching out towards the wall, and Pidge has this shocked look on her face as they both touch it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you, you inch out your hands, respect, respectively. You're getting closer and closer and closer as Pidge's face just, like, goes <laughs> no! more and more to the horror side, like they're going to die. Oh, no. They're going to die. And I'm going to be all alone here. <laughs> you just press up against it, and it's like if it was any other wall. It's just blackness. That's it. Can we feel hmm. all over it and just explore different sections and make sure there's no passageways anywhere? You can certainly do that. All right, uh, I do that. Make an investigation check. Uh, Ten. You don't find any kind of passage, but you don't think you've missed anything. Like, you're, you're going at it and you, you went across with your hands... Um, very we'll say relatively quickly, like you did pretty meth well methodically. You haven't found you haven't found anything, but you're like I, you you're not second guessing yourself. Okay. Oh, I'm just glad you're not dead. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try a magical weapon again. I'm gonna pull out the lightning sword and start tapping at various places around the wall. Ting, 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 and then. <laughs> <laughs> and you could like if you look up even just fleetingly because his laugh is getting really annoying you could tell that the heckler is looking down at lady Di and winking at her oh oh she needs to come in the hole too all right uh i'm honest oh. how are you at catching unicorns you can, but you, you can, you can tell that there's like, there's a bit of a thing going on between them. And Steven, like, you, you would know, like, it's, well, he's a fairy. She's fae. Right. And I have a telepathic bond with her. So can, can she explain what's going on? What are you asking her? Like, how does um, that work per se? Yo, um, you flirting with that heckler dude? I don't know if I can support your marriage. <laughs> I don't want him as a son-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> no, I support any kind of love, even if I don't like the guy. <laughs> even if you don't like the person. <laughs> um, let me read the spell again, just to make sure how that works. 
because I know I have. Uh, oh, I mean, we we don't yeah, have to. We don't have to understand. Go, uh, yeah, I mean, it understands languages, uh, mm-hmm. but it can't speak. Okay. And yeah, I have. Uh, yeah, I can un. Yeah, we can communicate telepathically. That's what it says. So we can talk pretty well. So I'll just be like, "Hey, Diana, um, s- what's going on? Is he talking to you? Do you know the guy?" Well. We would have met uh, very briefly before um, when I was on, before being summoned when I was on the, my my home world. Um, but I'm not allowed to say. It would be very unsportsmanlike of me to reveal this uh, this kind of information. Um, I suppose I could give you a hint. You are my my master and my summoner after all, and you don't weigh very much. So I do appreciate not being overburdened. Um, <laughs> I think, hmm, how can I say? I like you because you're not fat. Let's see. <laughs> well, um, you're all spending a lot of, an awful lot of time inside the hole. Sometimes it's not what's in a hole that matters. It's more of what's around it. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, she would be fine with the heckler. I was going to introduce her to Pegasus, but um, no. You guys okay, are so- along. Yeah. So what's around the hole? So it's sh- dirt. Mm. What do we? Oh wait, sorry. I will repeat what she said in my brain to my friends. And um, okay, so she says it's about what's around the hole. Do we think about? Do we think it might be to have something to do with the black walls, or, or is it like the floor that we just kind of jumped off of? That's a good question. Should we go outside the hole and look at things from up there? Sure. Um, I look at a monist. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, a a rope that cl- climbs into the air uh, on command. So I'm going to pull that out and I'm going to have it rise up in the air and then climb up the rope to the edge of the of the chasm. Okay. I like it. So, so I know that this is Steven's second mission with the monist and he's just impressed a like you have a magic item for everything. It's like a Swiss army knife and it's just it's so cool. Most of them are surprisingly cheap. <laughs> yes, they are. All right, so so you get the rope to climb up, and then we can just make our way back up the rope. Yep. If you want, I can make it loop around you to, to bring you up without having to uh, climb. Oh, I'm a pretty good climber. I should be okay, but thank you. I will accept your offer. <laughs> I do so. So Pidge, Pidge goes up without without any issues being hoisted by the uh, the uh, the loopy rope. Um, Steven, you can make a, just make a, an athletics check with advantage for rope yeah. climbing. Okay. So athletics, that should be, oh, okay. Um, with advantage. Yeah, that's a 20, that's a 26. Well, you're fine. <laughs> you very, very skillfully and deftly like climb up that rope. Like it's nobody's business. Um, and just hop back up and yeah. you, you hear off in the balcony, Oh, you guys are good at everything. So let's investigate the floor. Is it made of dirt? No, the floor or is wood. S- floor is wood. Like like in the hallway, it's the same. Like it's continuing floor in, and then it's just wood and black pit. Mm. Okay. We haven't been up on the balcony yet. Do you want to use that rope trick to uh, get us up there? Yeah, sure. How high up is the balcony? Uh, it would be thirty feet up. Okay, I've got, I believe, 50 or 60 feet of rope, so up we go. Mm-hmm. Yay. So, All right. uh, who's going up first? Um, I will. I mean, I'll go. Oh. Okay, I'm honest, you go. Okay, so I, I uh, grab a loop of rope around my hand, and I get hauled up into the air, and uh, I touch down on the balcony. You, you you can tell the balcony actually like because from that distance it you thought it would be a lot bigger but it's actually pretty small once you get up, um, and the heckler is just there floating a bit of the railing and you come f- like face level with him and he's like, <laughs> what are you trying to look for? What is this? <gasps> and he just moves aside as he's like kind of floating and you can tell like there's no there's no door passage behind it. Some things are just for show. <laughs> I think he gets uh, happier when we're on the wrong track. I'm going to drift back oh. down. Yeah, it seems like we were closer we were in the hole. Hmm. Can, Pidge, can you do any kind of anything like 
reanimating the wood of these planks and talking to them? Is that maybe? I... Because they are technically I plants. I can do that. I can, I can turn these woods into people. Um, <laughs> oh, that too. It's expensive. <laughs> no, I was thinking talk to plants. Because these, oh. are, these are plants. Or at least they, they were. They're pretty dead, though. They, they're they, pretty they, dead. They've been, they've been killed and processed. Yeah, they're like people parts. I, I could do an awaken spell and I could talk to things, but it costs a thousand gold points. So, yeah, let's, let's um, hold yeah, off may, on may, that. Maybe say, yeah, save that for I was later. Kind of thinking that how in the Fey realm, purpose shapes reality. So I was thinking that maybe that blackness there is like a shapeable reality, and that it's <gasps> possible that we could reach into the darkness with a hand and pull out a key. So I uh, propose that Amonist catches me again. I do. Because we've been given the clue that everything is close at hand, right, for the people who live here. So I uh, reach in to the wall and I, I like touch my hand to the wall mm -hmm. and I feel the purpose of a key and I see if my hand like smushes into the wall. At all. Make an arcana check. Okay. 18. You, you definitely feel that this like... The entire pit is one thing. Oh. It's not so much as a pit as it is um, almost an object. You get you get the feeling you've heard or read about something like this before. Hmm. I say to my friends, it sounds like this pit is one object. Is it kind of like a depressed button that we need to lift back up? Um, since Pidge, uh, Pidge sorry, shared that information, can I try maybe like identify what it could be um with the gnomish like lore training uh i would have advantage on history regarding magic items and magic devices yeah go ahead so can i can i try and maybe figure that out okay mm -hmm. so i got advantage on a history let's try oh that's lucky that's 19 you remember distinctively reading about um Wizards, sorcerers, different spellcasters, art artificers, creating these portable extra-dimensional spaces. Okay, and it seems like the hole would be one of those. You definitely feel like it. Like this is it would make a lot of sense. Like it coincides with a lot of stuff that you've read before. Okay, so I want to try something, and it might be silly. Um, because I, I don't think I lowered myself in the hole the second time when Pidge went down to touch the wall. So I'd still be like on the main wooded floor area yeah. um can i try and like go to the like the the edge of the hole and try to lift it like maybe it's portable like a carpet oh right you know what i mean i'm still inside it <laughs> i know i just want to lift a corner if if it works then we'll pull you out before i like fold it up and throw it someplace yep so you go you go to the edge and you kind of like just inch your finger under it and you can lift the edge of the oh hole my. wow Yes. May no. I please leave? <laughs> yeah, I'm on this pull her out. Okay, I, we'll I send the, the rope thing. snaking down for her. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> okay, and then once Pidge is out, I'll. I'm very polite, so a little bit like a fitted sheet. I'll start folding it nicely to see kind of what would be under it. Um, you you start folding up the portable hole, which one of you or Stephen can add to your inventory. Oh. Oh, I'll. I yeah, mean, it's I'll it's it. it's an item, and you found it. I'm putting the loot on the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll write that down then. I'll write down that I have a portable hole. Um, and there is floor under it. Ooh. Is the floor any different than the the other floor? It is more wood, but you are left with an empty room, a door with bars, and a portable hole. Can I inspect these uh -huh. bars? You definitely can. All right, I'm going to do that. Uh, where did my thing go? There it is. Uh, 17. Okay. They are, well, they're metal bars uh, spaced one inch apart. They're pretty thick. Uh, they're almost an inch themselves in, uh, in diameter. God. <laughs> and... Um, oh, they're metal? They, they are definitely metal. Uh, how much did you roll? Ooh. I rolled an 18 and then it's minus 18. one. So oh, 17. Oh, fine. Um, you can 
Are there, they iron? You have, you have no magical. Uh, you would have to invest. You would have to investigate more. Like if somebody wanted to identify what kind of metal it was, um, that wasn't quite enough to determine it. It's it's gray. I can give you that. It's like a darkish gray. Ooh ooh. Yeah. Do I, you tell me that? Yes, I'll tell you that there that the, the, these metal just looks like metal. I can't really tell what kind. I just know it's not the shiny steel of of my swords. That's that's all I got. Okay, I'd like to try something, and we'll find out if they're iron or not. <laughs> <laughs> so starting at second level which i'm level 11 mm -hmm. i can temporarily alter the physical properties of one non-magical object changing it from one substance into another i perform a special alchemical procedure which i've decided is a waving of the hand in front of the metal bar okay on one object composed entirely of wood stone iron copper or silver transforming it into a different one of those materials and i can do one cubic feet per uh for 10 minutes so is it iron? Because if it was, it's now balsa wood. Or silver. You, yeah, you, you touch it and it does turn into uh, balsa wood. Excellent. Excellent. Judo chop! You now have a one foot space in, in the metal bars. So you have three inches. Wait, it was, was only... that like more of the bars? I'm sorry. Maybe I, I misunderstood how that works cubic foot of material oh, okay yeah so, so the, you, you have like the one volume cubic foot. so volume of the material not volume of physical yeah. space right yes oh sorry okay yes so we'll, we'll say that that was enough to, to get rid of one bar oh okay okay for each 10 it's minutes a, i just keep chop okay keep chopping the passage is now open did he freeze for you guys too yeah to the other yeah. room i'll be back Aww. We have to see if DM will allow us okay so can we continue to do this 10 minutes at a time doing multiple bars yeah, sure. No, not a problem at all. Okay. Balsa wood, chop. Yep. So now we have a pretty wide gap that we can get through. Is there a door on mm -hmm. the other side of these bars or just empty space? Uh, it's empty space. It's the same thing as before. Like there's that, that little glowy part on the on the floor and it's dark. I think I have to step through okay. that. Or Steven, you want to go? Right. You're a little smaller. Yeah, I'll go. So I'll squeeze through the bars. Clink, clink, clink. And then I'll walk a little bit further. Uh, after we go through, I would like to use mending to put the bars back. Uh, sure. You, well, once you step through, if you do it right away, uh, you, you definitely can. But then once you go a bit further, like you pass kind of like that threshold, if you will. No, I would do it right away. I would yeah, like okay. put them in place as I, uh, go through, I turn around and I lift the no longer balsa wood because I can dismiss it. I lift the iron bars back and I like mending lets you seal two edges together. Yeah. So I seal the edges of mm -hmm. the bars. Yeah. I didn't break it. Okay. <laughs> thanks. Bye. <laughs> Not a problem. You, you hear, you hear off in the distance. <laughs> I've never seen there. anybody fix it before. <laughs> oh, okay. So that might be a good thing. They might like us better. Probably not. They're jerks. Yeah, a little bit. Let's keep going. Fade. We're right. following you. Yeah. So I'll uh, I'll grab Amonas by the hand and I'll keep walking further and I'll just be like, I'll turn my head back on, over my shoulder like, you're coming, Diana, and we keep going. Awesome. So you come into the next room. Um, so you've passed, you've passed the threshold. Pidge has mended the bars. The heckler has heckled and... We'll see next time what happens in that new room. So for now, we'll just say bye to Amonist. Bye. Bye to Pidge. Bye. And bye to Steven. I'm starting to dislike fairies a little bit. The jerks. <laughs> Too bad. You are one. We'll see what happens next time. Bye. Bye. We hope that you're enjoying this episode of the Fire Breathing Kittens podcast. Please leave us a review on iTunes.com. You can subscribe to receive new episodes through your podcast player or by visiting firebreathingkittenspodcast.com or finding us on YouTube. Can you think of someone who might enjoy this podcast? Please share it with them. We don't pay to advertise this show, so the only way we can grow is through the support of listeners like you. Thank you. All right. Welcome back to Fire Breathing Kittens. We're here again with Amonist. Hello. With Pidge. 
Hi. And with Stephen. Hi. All right. So you had just solved in one way <laughs> the uh, <laughs> the room with the hole in the bars, and you stumble into this new room. And as you walk in, Pidge, you had just mended the bars, so you would notice this first, that the doorway behind you disappears completely. Hmm. And you're left in a, of course. A, a pretty wide open space that seems to be lit by sunlight, but there are no apparent windows. And same thing, there's no apparent ceiling. It's almost like it just goes on forever, but it's, it just gets darker and darker and darker as it goes up. Um, but it's almost as if sunlight was coming in at, say, like a, a 10, f- 10 foot height from the walls themselves. Um, and as you look around, you see tables, some with lumps of clay on them um, that are starting to be sculpted. You see like a little pottery station. And right in the middle of the room, there is actually a, uh, a stand with a painting on it. So it's, uh, and a variety of like different paints on the side of it. Um, and the person was, uh, whoever was there before had started a painting, uh, just the background. So just a few splurges of colors, nothing uh, very distinct. Uh, paints set on the side beside the stand and you're seemingly in a doorless painter studio or artist's studio should i say is there a door with bars Ooh. there is no door at all there is however a familiar voice <laughs> of course this he's here. is always the toughest one <laughs> okay Ooh, not everybody gets it so i feel like we're gonna end up going into that painting mary poppins style is there no other oh, door in the room no it's no just... doors hmm yeah i agree with you i'm honest it looks like a landscape right i think that's gonna be the way forward it... yeah uh, there, it could be there's only there's only like uh beginnings of, of colors being put down it's almost like just a background but nothing nothing descript for now like they didn't actually paint like a prairie or anything it's just washes of color basically like a base coat maybe we need to finish the painting yes i agree who is the best amongst us at painting <laughs> i think that depends on what skill we get to use for it if i can use sleight of hand as painting skill that's a really nice bonus Less metagaming. Is there anything about a monist's past that might make him a good painter? Uh, I mean... Have you painted before a monist? Well, of course, I'm an elf. We're, I mean, we're all at least partially adept in most of the arts. That is kind of an elf thing. <laughs> but, but, uh, but he's got a point, but... Hmm. Has, has I mean, a I'm... monist ever touched a paintbrush in his life? Of course. Is, is, it, is it an interest of his? Uh... He... He has a few other arts that he's more invested in, but he has at least a basic level of skill in, in, in all forms of, of, of art as an elf. Okay. Uh, I guess. Okay, hmm. so you have basic racial superiority. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Steven, have you ever painted before? Not really, no. I'm, I, I used to like do like nice leather like designs on boots and stuff. That's why my boots look so good. Um, I'm a tinkerer. I've, you know, like I've fixed some watches, but I, besides finger painting, I don't think I could help with this. Um, I wonder though, since it seems like none of us are very versed in that sort of art, not that you're not a bad, uh, that you're a bad artist, Amonis, that's not what I'm saying, but it sounds like none of us are really good at painting, but I wonder if, because you said there were like, Something being sculpted, right? Like half finished sculptures or clay. Yeah, there are different stations. So there's uh there's there's one with uh, pottery, one with clay. Okay, and the one with clay, like did what? Did somebody like start sculpting something, or is it just like a big block? Uh, there's like a, a basic shape that you could infer. Like I won't even make you roll insight for that, but you could kind of guess that they were most likely going to shape it into some sort of humanoid. Uh, because it does have like that somewhat conal base with a like a ball on top. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if we can't get that shape to paint it. Yeah, for us. we have to c- sculpt the artist. Yeah, it's it's very. Um, there was a play in my old town called Pygmalion, and I'm very excited to finish this. So let's try. Um, um. Okay. Give me one minute. 
Are you going to animate him? Or actually, right. uh, uh, <laughs> hold on. Yeah, it sounds like it's your time, Pidge. Pidge takes out her spell book, and she starts scrolling through it. Mm-hmm. If that's what you want to happen, then I can help. Pidge turns the pages in her spell book to the right page and says, Okay, I'm going to need one minute. Don't look, no peeking. And I go over to the table with the clay. Okay. I mold the clay with my hands, which is just the touch action. Mm-hmm. And I cast Tiny Servant. I touch one tiny non-magical object that isn't attached to another object and isn't being carried. It animates and sprouts little arms and legs, becoming a creature under my control until the spell ends or the creature drops to zero hit points. Once given an order, it continues to follow that order until its task is complete. So <laughs> using that third level spell slot of Tiny Servant, I animate the clay and I, I hold up my I turn around and I hold up my hands and standing on my hands is a little Picasso. No, he was a jerk. Uh Leonardo da Vinci. I don't know if he was a jerk or not, but at least he's not Picasso. Is a little Leonardo da Vinci. Oh, he's so cute. Hi Leonardo. So you see this tiny little um tiny little clay figure, so he has that reddish gray um color about him, but everything is was magically sculpted to perfection. So he has like that little beret and the beard, like the big bushy beard, uh, that's like really detailed in it. Um, but in, uh, in, in, we'll say it's in chibi form. So it has like a big head and like tiny, tiny, tiny little arms and a stout body. <laughs> and he just it's the Leonardo da Vinci Funko Pop. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. I set it down on a stool in front of the easel mm-hmm. and show it the paints, and ask it to paint us, and then I pose. <laughs> <laughs> you want it to paint you? Do you guys want to pose? Yeah, definitely. I'll, um, you know, I'm I'm thinking, like, I don't know, like, uh, déjeuner sur l'herbe or something, and, like, <laughs> la- so I, I kind of lie down to get one of those, like, like one of those French girls' poses. <laughs> um. Except, I mean, I, I guess friends doesn't exist. So it'll be like, paint me like one of those Nicomoy ladies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you're laying on one of the, the tables. I'm leaning up against one of the tables uh, nonchalantly towards your head end, not your butt end. And Amonist, where are you? <laughs> I'm just standing there looking disapprovingly down at both of you. He's behind <laughs> the bench, arms folded across his chest. Yeah. And then I guess lipping your hair is Lady Diana. And she's just kind of like, Oh yeah, you. L- Lady Diana just takes a majestic pose in the background, like very like you know like Ferrari or something. <laughs> and, yeah, and let's see if Leonardo can do this. All right, so um, Leonardo Chibinci would uh, like plop, <laughs> plop up onto the stool. He he grabs the paintbrush, and you can tell he like looks the the figure. Looks at the canvas, looks at the brush, looks at the paint, looks at the canvas, dips the brush in the paint, holds it out, but he never strikes the canvas. And after a minute or so, you a start to wonder, okay, what what what's happening? Why isn't it? Why isn't this working? Uh, especially knowing your spell, but you see, paint actually start to trickle, uh, to lift off of the brush, and go beside the canvas like in midair, and start to reproduce you all, life-size, as you're posing. And this goes on for... Hey, we don't want to fight ourselves, Leonardo. <laughs> okay. That's also where I'm afraid this is going. It's, 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 uh, a, it's a slow process, so it can be interrupted, uh, but it's... Let's, uh... let's test this out. I, I see what's going on, and I say, just paint me first. <laughs> No offense to myself, but I think if there's one of us who we're going to test this with, <laughs> it should be me. <laughs> uh, Who's the easiest to defeat in battle, Amonis? Yeah, I know. Yeah. I can probably take you out with so, one turn. Yes. I have 11 AC. <laughs> so. All right. So, Leonardo Chivinci, uh, here's what you said. Looks at you. Looks at the brush. Looks at the paint. Suddenly, whatever was starting to form dissipates and like flows back to the brush. Looks at you, looks at the brush, and points the the paintbrush again in 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 uh, midair. Paint starts to trickle out slowly, flowing, 
and starts again, but this time only Pidge, from head to toe. The whole process takes, uh, we'll say about five minutes. And then I look the like Megumin from Konosuba. Ooh, I love that. Uh, with or without the eye patch? <laughs> without the eye patch, and <laughs> I have like three stabs for some reason, so it's it's like I'm a little <laughs> oh nice caring too much. <laughs> but other than that, <laughs> but I have so, a cool hat. So this uh, this small gnome with a large hat and three staves on her back, uh, but no eye patch, is drawn in midair by the paint. Leonardo Chibinchi looks at the brush, looks at you, the real you. And puts the brush back in the paint and just lifts it arms. Good job, Leonardo. I walk over to him and I try to pat him on the little chibi head. Do I get attacked by myself? Uh, no. Actually, okay. it doesn't move. Oh, I inspect myself. When you start to inspect it, you see it's a mannequin. Perfect likeliness of you. Perfect likeliness down to any minute little detail. But it's just a mannequin. It's not alive. Mm, this would be useful to, like, put in my bed when I'm sleeping, and then I'll sleep under the bed, and I'll see what attacks it. Hmm. Is Steven muted? I'm not muted. Oh, no. okay. You reacted somehow <laughs> to that. <laughs> I I reacted quietly because I'm thinking. Oh. Um, and you, you just hear, okay. Oh! <laughs> I guess that's a clue. Thank you for the souvenir, giggling guy. Okay. So I wonder, because this all started with looking for a door, um, I wonder if Leonardo Chibinchi wouldn't be able to paint us a door to get to the next mm -hmm. room. So instead of us posing for it, maybe we can sculpt the door out of the clay we have here and maybe like use the pottery kit to make a handle for the door and then maybe he'll paint that and then we'll be able to walk through. Or, well, true. Although, did, didn't the mannequin just kind of come out from nowhere in the air because of the paint? Yeah. And I'm, I'm thinking if we show a door to Leonardo oh, Chibinchi, he will, he will manifest another door and that will be the right door because it'll be made from that. Got it. Paint. He has to have a subject first. Yeah. Okay. So, so I'll try that. So I'll get to, I guess I'll get to the pottery station first and I'll start like, I don't know, fashioning door handles. That's like basic mechanism, so I feel like with my tinkering skills, I might be able to do that. And I'll instruct the others, like, maybe start on the clay and, like, do the shape of a door. Amonist, are you making the door out of clay? Uh, sure, I can assist. This frees me up to try to put Pidge Mannequin on the back of Lady Diana. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking her with me. <laughs> <laughs> the important the important thing to know though uh when when you're putting mannequin pidge on the back of lady die um what's the pose um i guess she's leaning into the the neck of lady diana because i have to attach her there with rope i assume okay. so the, yeah. the articulations would stick like if you chose to put her in one way or another like she would stay that way okay i've got her arms around lady diana's neck Okay. So that she can hold on. All right. Perfect. So, Stephen, hmm. you are using a pottery table to... Yeah, I kind of want to shape the... A doorknob? Shape like... Yeah, like a doorknob with like... You know, like both sides of a doorknob with the mechanism so like it could turn and like open. Uh, and I try to start and tinker that a little bit. Okay. Okay. Fun fact, that is a six-sided hexagonal column that is attached at one end, and that rod is free-twisting in the other end, and that's how doors open. How do I know this? I've lifted it out of a door and then stared stupidly at the flat panel with no knob. <laughs> 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 so that's how at least one door works. Okay. <laughs> All right. So using these instructions, can I make that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, go ahead and... Uh... I mean, you would be proficient in it, and tinkering can be, we'll say, either intelligence or, we'll say, intelligence, dex, or charisma, because I feel that... Okay. Yeah. So, in that case, I'll use charisma. It's it's an artistic expression, yeah. so I'll try charisma, and I guess I can add my proficiency bonus because of the tinker tools. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. 
So that does. Oh no! What? Oh, that was that was a nat one. <laughs> oh. So nat one, it still brings me up to six. So yeah, take that door. Okay. <laughs> well, you start making a variety of different options. Uh, you can't replicate the mechanism per se. But you have fashioned uh, a tiny little knob that seems to be like a kitchen cabinet type of knob little thing. Uh, you've made a door knocker. So you made like a little uh, a oh. little cylinder that you've like curled up on itself uh, um, to just have like that circle, um, like one link of a chain. Uh, so you have a door knocker, you have a little knob, and then you make one of those like just... You can take another one of those cylinders that you've rolled out um, because you can't quite grasp how this spinning table works for the pottery uh and you just like plop it uh in a in a half uh, in half circle shape uh to be like just a, a regular handle so you can't make a mechanism but you've given okay. the team options all right hey buddies i don't think i i mean that's not what i planned but i got this but i'm, I'm sure it'll be fine right as long as it looks like a door it should be okay right yeah um <laughs> mostly because my role was not much better <laughs> <laughs> so what did you roll to make uh I got a six. Okay. Well, you're making you're you're making like a just a flat pane. So it's not uh it's it's like it's just a flat panel, so it's not super it's not super difficult. Um with a six, what I would say is like in some areas you try to get it straight but it starts to crack so you like patch it up in certain places with like more clay uh so it's very patchy work but you have managed to make a flat surface you just couldn't like you couldn't stand it up it's on the table but it's there it's it's nice rolled out patched clay and you try to get some wood grain in there so you like streaked it here and there we try yeah Okay, and so I guess now we just need to assemble it. So I'll bring, like, the door knocker and the kitchen cabinet, like, little knob thing, and I'll try to put there where they should go on a regular door. Um, like, push it into the clay a little bit. And, oh, do we have to, like, do we have to cook clay? Or, like, is there a kiln in the room? Like, do we have to, like, finish it so it would be more solid and we could hold it upright? Uh, you you could see if you look out to the far right, like a, a little further away, uh, there seems to be what would, uh, yeah, what looks like a kiln. Okay. Um, is it, I mean, it's not a machine, but like, is it on? Like, is there fire in there? Yeah, there's fire. Okay. So then I guess I'll need, uh, I'll need a monist's help. And I guess like the two of us can bring that flat surface to the kiln. And the, um, I know the, the, the table right is word is wood, not cook, though. but what? The table is wood. So the table that a monist laid flat the uh the the panel of clay is wood okay oh putting that out there hmm. yeah so we'll have to kind of slide that in there could you make a tiny model oh i'm could try. i thought about that but then i was um, i was afraid we might get a tiny door okay um how big is the kiln oh yeah how big is it uh it it would be it would be big enough uh to to it's it's a very large one, so it's like one of those almost like a vault door type of thing. Um, oh, okay, so it it would be large enough if so you chose to put the entire table in. Hmm. Okay. Um. All right. So let's try this. Is there any more clay that we could use to try and fashion a little door first, or did we use all use up all the clay to make that one big door that we have? Uh, if you, if you put your hand in the box that had the clay in it, um, there's it seems to be always more that comes out. Oh, okay, that's fun. Thank you, fairies. And yeah, I'll try very quickly to kind of roll out just a tiny little door, like, you know, like card size. Yeah. And I'll try and show that to Leonardo Chibinchi. All right, so make another check. Oh, right, cool. Uh, so same thing, charisma, tinkering, all of that? Yeah. Okay, ooh, that's better. Ooh, that's so much better. That's 22. Okay. Great. So you managed to make a uh, tiny little model door. It is uh, it's super cute. It's really quaint. Um, you even like make like you roll out tiny little balls and you flatten them on certain surfaces and you stick them on the side to make like almost like a uh, an, an edging around it. Uh, so you have like a door with a doorway and you put like a tiny little knob on it and you have yes. that now. 
Oh, it's much easier when it's small. Look at that. It's so cute. And then I'll show it to Jibinji. So can you try and paint us that? Like a ba like a door? I mentally command Chibinchi to paint the thing that Steven is showing it. I try to think small. I'm gonna fit through a tiny door. Oh, I can make you smaller. Oh. Uh. Oh. <laughs> oh, that would be so cute. Do it, do it. Uh all right. So but Chibinchi I, yes. I I tell Chibinchi to make a us sized door. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so Chibinchi looks at you, looks at the others, looks at the paint, looks at the brush, dips it in, holds it out towards a wall, and same as before, slowly paint starts to wisp out of the brush, and it starts to paint a replica of the door on the wall. Ooh. And it is, uh, it's gnome-sized. <laughs> <laughs> Amonist was looking down on us before, so that's probably fine. Yeah, there's a little bit of justice in there. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, I mean, I I don't criticize anybody based on their size, but I always have to, like, sit on, like, big phone books, so I don't mind having a door to my size once in a while. And two out of three ain't bad. Good job, Chibi and Chibi. Yeah, this is fine. I can totally yeah. fit through a door that's your size. I'll just have to crawl. And I can make you smaller. I was, I'm just glad the door wasn't six inches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she puts down uh, puts down the brush once it's done uh, receives the praise from Pidge and just holds out its stubby little arms to its mouth Oh, he's happy uh, don't tell him he dies after 8 hours <laughs> <laughs> okay so Steven a little sad to hear that Chibinchi has an expiry date will turn around and open the door that was just painted you put your hand on the knob, you turn it, and the door opens. And behind it is a new space. Yay! Hey, Shibinchi, paint me a million dollars. <laughs> what are dollars? <laughs> paint me a pile of gold. <laughs> Shibinchi looks at you, looks at the brush, looks at the paint, dips it in the paint, looks at the brush, points at the brush, uh, as before. And... <laughs> The paint starts to trickle ever again, and it starts to like unload onto the floor, and it's just like kind of, kind of. I imagine it's circling, um, and you see gold pieces start to form, slowly but surely, piling up, <laughs> piling up, piling up. Oh my piling god! Piling up, I... piling up, and after like some, we'll say ten minutes, because it's it's still it's a pretty sizable amount. It stops. He puts the brush back in the paint, looks at you, lifts his arms. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. High five for a little chibi and chi. Um, you guys want, like, 10,000 gold each? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, how much gold is there? Roll a, um, just, what's your, what's your, uh, investigation modifier, Pidge? Plus nine. Okay, yeah, so you have, like, a passive investigation of 19. You pick up a coin, and just by the weight of it, and, like, how it feels, it looks exactly like a gold coin. But it's not gold. You can tell it's another substance. You can't put your finger quite on what it is. But just by that, you estimate the total value of the pile. So like these one million pieces of coins, uh, it's a total of 25 gold. No more. Uh, fairies. Tricksters. <laughs> uh. There is no easy way to get rich. <laughs> or is there? All right. So, all right, so we have our little door, uh, and we're going to have to crawl through. I mean, we can walk through because it's our size, but Amonis will have to crawl. Um, That's fine. I'm going to turn to my ho I'm going to turn to my horse. I'm sorry, Diana. I don't <laughs> think you can come further. Oh, we're not going to leave Diana in the Fey Realm. Oh, wait, you can summon her later. She's your fine yeah, steed. I, I, yeah, I can call her back, which, and like, I can it's fine. She'll have a vacation and smaller. But yeah, but you should save your magic. We don't know what we're dealing with here. So. Oh my gosh, Diana. Yeah. Wait, she's got Pidge Mannequin on her. Yeah. <laughs> she must come. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I use a pinch of powdered iron like Salt Bay, and I make Lady Diana a little tiny horse. She technically <laughs> has the new dimensions of, let's see, halved in all dimensions and weight reduced to one eighth of normal. Oh. Okay, so she was large, so that would make her medium. She should now fit through the door a little bit. 
She could, yeah, she could squeeze through. Yeah, it'll... Okay, cool. Thank you for this. And let's all go through. Woot! I'll ask Amonis to go first, <laughs> just to make sure it's safe. And I'll enjoy watching him crawl. <sighs> you just want to look at my butt. Yeah. <laughs> Amonis... I did not say... I never said that. <laughs> Amonis crouches down and opens the, the little door and starts to crawl through. He gives his butt a little shake. Point of order, what type of pants are you wearing? They are very tight <laughs> leather pants, very form-fitting, very supple, a little oh. stretchy. Um, the same pants I've always been wearing. And you did, you know, I'm decked out in like full full body like skin tight leather. Um <laughs> I did not know. <laughs> always have been. Um and they have a little drawstring in the front and they have, then they have laces going up the, the, the legs on both sides. Oh, leg laces. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I like leg nice. laces. Nice. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, yeah, you can, you can see the leather creak a little bit as I kneel down on the ground and strain and give a little wiggle as I go through. <laughs> if, if you fart, does it make a bubble? I, I don't know. I've never farted. <laughs> it's not possible for elves. They're racially superior. <laughs> <laughs> You know, in all in all the reading I've ever done, I've never heard of any elf farting. I'm just saying, it's it's never happened. Yeah, no evidence exists. I don't think I've heard of any race farting, save maybe like orcs and dwarves. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I crawl forward. All right. Uh, cool. And then I'll, I guess I'll follow, and um, and then I'll ask Diana to follow us. All right. So you you crawl into the room. Uh, each uh, each one uh, on your own turn. And again, of course, you hear, ah! <laughs> ooh, fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> and once you get in, light just softly starts to, uh, to come into the room. You're in a, a much wider space this time. It, it seems to be about like 90 feet on either side, a uh, square room. The door behind you, once again, of course, has disappeared. And um, you see different... Uh, there's about 12, so like six on either side, sitting in uh, just car uh, wood carved uh, out of wood. Chairs that are carved out of wood, sorry. Um, very wispy-like. Uh, you can clearly see the, uh, the, sylvan, uh, the sylvan influence in this, uh, in this particular work. And they're tiny little people sitting on it that have like very stretched back and long blue hair uh, that come out into a point. Uh, blue skin, uh, slightly darker tone than the hair. And in the middle, sitting very lopsided on, uh, on a chair on what seems to be some sort of throne uh, is a, a jester in purple, teal, and gold. Oh, I pull out the invitation and I compare. Guys, I think we found him. It's the same color. Ooh. Sh sh should we rub, rub some uh, lemons on it? <laughs> <laughs> did did Amos actually say that? Yes. All right. Uh, so you, you would just hear from the figure, hmm, well, I do like lemon, but usually in a drink, not so much on my skin. It tends to burn if I've been cut, but I haven't been recently, and I hope not to be. But who knows? I guess we'll find out. You've made it through the guild hall. How great. Yay! Did you have fun? Did you enjoy the invitation? I've only recently taken the reins. Yeah, I like I, I like puzzles. This was fun. Mm -hmm. It's great. Uh, the uh, You hear once again. <laughs> and on his shoulder uh, appears the heckler. So sitting on the on the jester's shoulder, and he says, uh, uh, "Sorry, okay. yeah, no, not on yours, on the jester's." And he says, "Ha ah, ha Well, you know, they 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 made it through pretty okay. Uh, um, I'm always disappointed. I, I I wish I could have laughed, maybe a bit more, maybe poked a bit of fun, but they were pretty good at it. They were pretty good. Hmm. Well, now, and what did you hope to find today?" We were curious about this uh, these invitations you've spread around the room. Uh, by the way, hi, my name is Steven, and I'll extend my hand in order to shake his. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Uh, so you walk further up, 
Um, so you're you're yeah. now like proceeding between the rows of like these six uh, these six fig- tiny little figures that are sitting on either on either side. Uh, you extend your hand, and the jester with like his hood and the the pointed hats and all uh, looks at it slightly, mimics shaking your hand, and when he does the motion of just extending his hand, a hand almost like a white glove comes off of his and just shakes yours. It's like, pleasure. Oh, that's, that, that's very socially distant. Okay. Um, I, okay. I'm shaking a, a floating hand. I'm, that's not creepy. I'm cautious at times. I'm sorry. We invite so many people in. Sometimes it's hard to make, uh, be certain of who to trust I, and who not to. I understand. Um, I don't, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Oh, 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 my apologies. Nikolai. Yeah. Nikolai, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So you say you've come into this position recently. Was that some sort of promotion? Uh, you seem to be doing very well for yourself with these like fancy invitations that match your clothes. Of sorts. They needed somebody. I happened to be there. And he kind of twists and turns and like just shifts position on the chair. Okay. Um, quickly, I want to send a mental comment to Diana because I'm like, I'm starting to not trust this guy. I mean, he might be a new friend. So, of course, I'll give him like a second, a third and a fourth chance. But yeah, just get ready for battle, girl. What? And if you need to, if you need to drop the mannequin. <laughs> what are you feeling? <laughs> I mean, I can't say that because I'm in front of him. So I, I just send that to Diana because I want her to be ready just in case. Okay. Pidge is great at groveling and bowing. She has no pride. She, um, am I wearing a dress? No, dresses suck. She bows <laughs> and stays bowed and speaks to the floor while addressing the king and says, Hello, I am Pidge Beekman. How may we, the fire-breathing kittens, be of service to you? We have come to your invitation. Oh, well, you know, Toad Choir always invites people in to see how you would react to different uh, different puzzles, different things. We like spreading the fun. Um, we're very generous. He didn't, Sorry? He didn't tell me to rise, so I'm still bowed. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's full aware of it. Um, and <laughs> he kind of, he, he shifts again on the chair and he sits like upside down this time, so like you know, bum against the the back of the chair, his head propping down, uh, and to be eye level with you without uh, without actually getting getting up. And every time he shifts, you hear the different bells on his costume go gling gling. And he's like, "Oh well, service? No service. It was all for fun. <laughs> I do uh, I do enjoy a little trick here and there. Hmm. Was there anything anything you wanted to know? We could swap stories. Well." I guess I'm still curious about how you got the promotion and decided to come to Nicomoy. Uh, it's super interesting. I, I mean, I don't think I even heard of the, how is it called? The Toad Choir, um, like popping up again to me was just like legends and hearsay. So it's, it's nice to know that you actually exist. It's cool. Mm-hmm. How did that happen? It was somewhat dead for a while until I came along. Let's see. I am curious to test out a few things. How about you do me a favor, and then I'll tell you my story. I guess that would depend on the favor. Hmm, if you could best me in battle, maybe. I might be inclined to share just a bit more. Pidge raises her head and stands straight and tall and looks at a monist for an opinion. I mean, we kind of thought this would happen. You could you could I tell mean, it's, it, um, even just passively you could tell he's not murderous per se it's really like it's a hundred percent playfulness okay if it's just playful then I I pull up my morning star I raise my shield if it's just for fun then I'm ready I guess you can still get hurt in games <laughs> uh... <laughs> are we rolling initiative. Uh, I, I heard an um. I'll get. I'll go for the um first. Um. Uh, so. Maybe you want to back away first. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a bit close. <laughs> so. I just yeah. I just mostly want to back away, and I'm so sitting on the chairs are like mannequins, 
like dolls? No, or? no, no. These are like tiny, tiny little fae people with, like I said, the, the blue skin and the extended blue hair. Uh, and they're oh, all so they're people. Yeah, they're they're looking at you and they're like fiddling and they're whispering amongst themselves, jittering okay. a bit. You can you yeah. can tell their movements are like really quick. Whenever they move, it's very like. Ooh, I want to be fifty feet away from them. <laughs> Do you want to crouch behind a chair and have three quarter cover? Nope, not right behind one of the people and within their arms reach. I think I want to be um, like over there and I like in the back of the room. Um, so I just back up slowly. <laughs> <laughs> like I know there's no door to exit through, but in that direction, are there any? Is there any cover at all in that area? Uh, you could find a couple of tables. You could, like, lop one over very quickly. Yeah. I think I just want to be behind a table. And then a monist can accept for us. <laughs> like, backing slowly away. Sure. So do we have a deal? And once again, he extends the hand and the, the white glove, uh, what looks like a white gloved hand, appears once again in front of Stephen, who would be the closest at this point, and says, let's shake on it. Okay. Uh, and I'll grab the hand and shake it. And roll initiative. Ah. Yay, I backed away. (laughs) (laughs) Fifteen. So since I'm not on a her, I'm going to roll initiative for Diana too. Yep. Okay, so I got sixteen and she got fourteen. Okay. Eight. And then, I mean, uh, just for ease uh, ease of it, um, Stephen, you're going to get on Lady Di, I guess. On your first turn, yeah. I, uh, I mean, I'm going to get to her on my turn, but but I mean that 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 was uh, the plan. What? Yeah, that's the plan. Okay. So what I'll do, if you want, just for the first round, uh, you can just do your entire thing on her initiative. Okay, just, cool. just for ease of it, or else it's just going to be a long run of thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, and then I'm just going to go here. Would you say that I have three quarters cover, half cover, full cover? If you're if you're completely ducking behind the table, you have full cover. If you're popping yes. out your head, you have three quarters. Totally behind the table, not looking at any of the. <laughs> it looks kind of like I I voted no on the option, but they're gonna find out I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> not a problem. So, you've shaken the hand, and as you shake the hand. You see the uh, the people sitting on the side disappear, except for four of them. So two on either side. Okay. And from under the jester's hood, lights start to appear, and they position themselves on each of the six points of his hat, of his cap. So like the bells that would be on the around hmm. his cap are now tiny little glowing orbs. Okay, that's not scary at all. And... It is Steven's turn. All right. Um, uh, no, I'm so, so I'm so sorry. I'm so I, sorry. It's your first turn, so you would be getting on uh, on right, Lady Di. I'm getting on Diana. Yeah, so it's going to be a monist first, but then you can do your entire thing. Okay. Cool. A monist. All right. So I am going to try striking with my sword. Um, can I get to the the jester without incurring uh, attacks opportunity? Uh you can't you would actually incur two of them okay so instead i'm going to attack to go the the full length to go the full length it's uh, it's just slightly over 30 feet because you didn't advance or i didn't understand that you advanced during the role playing oh uh, okay i thought that or did you never mind i yeah i thought i was pissing myself up front and putting pidge in the back oh okay no it's fine it's fine then you can get to him but you would incur the attacks of opportunity okay so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna rush past him I'm i'm gonna attack the cronies instead um okay Whichever one is closest to me. Sure. And we'll say uh, I... the one on the left. I'm sorry, what? One of the ones on the left. Yes. Of the little alleyway. And I am I'm going to. I, I rolled the four sword hits to hit. They are 17. You have you have disadvantage on all of them. Do I? Yeah. Oh. You see, as it's as it's like twitching and stuff. You see its movements almost blurred. So it's like you can't really focus on its exact shape or where it actually is within its position. They have that same ability I do. Okay. So, let me just re-roll for all of these and make sure that these are actually still the to hits. I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that first. That is perfectly okay. 
Um, 17. Okay. So my to hits are 17, 13, 14, and 17. Two of them hit. Okay. The first and the last. Ah, then those two hits. The did... AC is 16. Oh. I'll just I'll just say it for for ease of. Uh, Perfect. Thank you. Um, so those two hit. The first one deals 18 damage. The second deals 17 damage. I slash across his face with non-lethal, of course. Uh, oh, okay. Damage. And so uh, you strike it twice, and you knock it down. It's very surprised. Uh, the other one, the other one starts skittering even more, as you slice down one of their one of their allies, one of their friends. Does it look down for the count? Uh, well, you said non-lethal, so it's like passed out. Oh wow, floor. those things are squishy. Yeah. Okay, that's the end of my turn. All right, now it is Steve, mounted Steven's turn. Yeah, okay, so it's it's really cool and cinematic because, like, Lady Diana runs up to me and I, like, with one hand, climb on her really quickly. And from the horse, I'm still not really trusting of this guy, so I want to throw a moonbeam in his face. So I cast moonbeam, and he's going to have to roll a constitution save, please, against 15. And if he's, I don't know if he is, but if he's a, ch a shape changer, he has disadvantage on that save. Okay. Uh, it is, uh, the save is made. Oh, damn. Okay. Uh, he still takes half damage, okay. so we'll see what that does. Um, okay. So, uh, so that was a total of 14 radiant, so he would take 7 radiant. Okay. And, uh, I was hoping to reveal his true form, but he made the save. Gosh darn it. And, yeah, that'll be the end of my turn. So I'm in the middle of that row with all of the... The little blue pixie people and him, and I'm on my horse. Ooh, as you as you hit him with the moonbeam, he he can't help but laugh and like, oh, that tickles. <laughs> and it is now his turn. At the start of the turn, uh, you are both within line of sight. Uh, so actually, for Stephen, that's the one. Okay, from Amonist, I need a con or a dex save. And from Steven, I need a wisdom or a con save. You get to choose. Oh. It doesn't matter. Uh, is it magic? It's an ability. It's not a spell. I got a 13. Okay, it's not a spell, so I don't get advantage on that. Oh, wait. No, I do get I get an extra bonus from Great Athleticism uh, 16. I think, I think athletics, Great Athleticism, the thing from Champion, is only for skill checks, I believe. Not for saves? I don't think it applies. Uh, I don't think so. Hold on. Uh, I think it's specifically for saving throws, is what I have written down here. Add half proficiency bonus to strength, dex, or con saving throws. But not to skill checks, because I have not been applying it to skill checks. Uh, give me just a second to check. What's the name of the things you guys are discussing? They might be different names. Uh, it is... I'm looking at Remarkable Athlete. Yes, that's the same thing. You're saying yeah, that that's for skills, not for saves? Yeah, because it says starting at 7th level, you can add half your proficiency bonus, round it up to any strength, dexterity, or constitution check. Oh, it's any check. Oh, uh, duly yeah, noted. No, it's, it's specifically for skills, it's not for saving throws. Okay, well then never mind. But you just gained a whole bunch of skills. Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's almost like half jack-of-all-trades, basically. Um, so, all right, I... Uh, yeah, the saves? So, yeah, I rolled a 16 on a wisdom. Okay, great. And I'm honest, it was a... Uh, I think it was a thir 13. Okay, so a blast of light, uh, just like sparks, emit from the jester in the direction of a monist. Um, and you try to like shield your eyes from it, but can't quite get it in time. And so you will be blinded until the start of your next turn. Okay. And... Steven, you start feeling this uncontrollable urge to laugh, but you manage to fight it off. Mm. Oof, that was lucky. Okay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and it stops. And so, uh, what's gonna happen? Actually, the jester is just gonna pull out a kazoo from his, uh, from his pocket. Walk, <gasps> he walk has back pockets a bit. with stuff in them. Oh, he has pockets with stuff. Uh, walk back a bit and blow into the kazoo. And then... Oh, okay. 
on top of Steven's shoulder. <laughs> oh, we meet again. Hi. Ugh. And please. Hi. Please make a wisdom saving throw. This okay. time it's magic. This time it's magic. Okay, so let me just... I, I have to double check my auras again. Because... Uh, okay, we, we have resistance to damage from spells. It's a gnomish. I, um, if, you're, yeah, if that's no, what you're looking for. I, as a gnome no, too. Yeah, but I'm also looking at my paladin aura thingies. Um, okay. Because I always forget those. Which, by the way, I forgot on that last save. I will say um, you have advantage. Are you a rock gnome or a forest gnome? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like me. So I have advantage on wisdom saves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, intelligence, uh, wisdom, but that's and from, saves. But that's from spells. It's not from general magic. I it's think. against this, this is a spell. This is a spell. Oh, yeah. awesome! So mm-hmm. I do have advantage to resist. So it's all of my auras and stuff. Uh, so it's almost like all of the races have their own benefits and disadvantages, and no one is no one type of Pokemon can beat all of the rest. Very true. So with my not racial supremacy, but my racial talents, uh, that was a 24. You are perfectly fine. So you hear it, like it leans in and it starts whispering in your ear. Oh, (laughs) you're never going to make it. You're never going to be able to hit him. You're never going to be able to hit me. You're never going to be able to hit anybody. And you just shrug it off. You're like, oh, my God, shut up. Ugh. (laughs) Yeah, I don't like that guy. Can I like shrug it off or it's like hanging on my shoulder pad? You swat at your shoulder, but your hand just passes through him. Ugh, okay. <laughs> Can't get rid of the heckler. <laughs> All right. Uh, as we step back, it is now. Uh, so there are three little sprightly things left. One of them, the one closest to Amonist, is going to zip forward and make a couple of attacks. Uh, At disadvantage. Yep. Well, just a... The, until one hits, is that uh, is that right? Yes. Okay. And then on my next turn, it goes back. Yeah. So actually, the first one is going to hit, um, sadly. It's going to be eight piercing damage, so it stabs you with a dagger. Okay. And then it zips back around again, and it stabs you again for another eight piercing damage. Okay. And then it runs off. Okay. Do we get a sense of how fast these guys are since like, we've seen them run? Four times as fast as you are. Oh my god. Yeah, these things are ridiculously fast. Oh, great. And so you do have, or I'm honest, you could get an attack of opportunity on it as it tries to um, oh, yes, please. to move away from you. If you chose. Yes. With disadvantage. With disadvantage. Okay. Yeah. So. Oh, because he's blinded. Darn. Uh, I missed. All right. And then it would be... So it's zipping away. It zooms to the back of the room and it is Pidge's no. turn. There's it still zoomed two... to the back Yeah, there it zoomed to the back of the room, but not not your end, the opposite end, so it's okay. behind the gesture. Okay. Oh. There are Whew. two two that would be closer on the right. Oh I don't I don't I have a range of 120 feet, my friend. <laughs> so good. Uh I actually don't even have to see anything, so I stay completely hidden behind my table. And you said that uh, the jester had kazoos in his pocket. What else does he have in his pocket? What ten things does he have in his pocket? Can you animate things that are being worn or carried? No, no. I I just, for flavor, if not, there's a trash can somewhere in this room, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, there, there are the chairs. There's another table um, you could get. Uh, and there's, uh, there are two daggers that were dropped by the... Uh, the, the Fay that is now unconscious. Okay, two dropped daggers sounds good. Um, yeah, I'm just looking for random tiny crap on the mm-hmm. ground. Um, literally don't care what it is. Like spare gum wrapper has now become a lethal weapon because I cast. <laughs> I mean, there there are there are twelve there are twelve chairs and there there's the two daggers no, that would be tiny, tiny, tiny object. That's all that's in the room, unless you really? pull something out of your pocket and like throw it. Okay. All right. I've got. You have a, a lot of gold coins. Yeah, I've got attack coins. So I'm gonna. <laughs> I guess I do expose myself. I pop out of the the table and I throw ten gold at him and I scream the words, "I'm sorry. Please take my money and don't attack me. Oh, I'm not <laughs> with them." And if you want me to do a deception check, that's fine because I throw ten gold coins. Um, how far can people throw things in D and D? Uh, you would have to, I guess, make. 
are you trying to throw them like on them or just trying like, to attack the king out? with animate objects tiny you could just like f- because it's part of the spell i'll let you just like take out and toss them out like as part of the spell okay i want them to reach the king and i can animate i have a range of 120 feet so anything near the king i can animate as well um so it's like you could toss them probably 10. like half of the way so like between you and the jester he moved back a bit there would be like 50 feet uh you could easily okay, wait, toss wait, wait. them like are 25. there ceiling tiles in this room uh it's the same thing as before like the the ceiling is uh essentially invisible like it goes on forever and ever and ever dead bugs dead bugs in the corner i'm sorry the the chairs Nothing. the daggers you can toss the coin you you can toss the coins and it's the same like i said it's it's you could it could be part of the spell but it's going to take a round to get there okay um can they not move and attack at the same time no they can't i'm just i'm really far away and i'm i'm pretty sure i can't throw things I, in real life, I can't throw things 90 feet, so... Um, but but how far can they move as part of the spell? Yeah. No, but he's he's 50 feet away, and I'm giving you half of that already just by throwing. So they would, the objects would animate within 25 feet of the jester. Okay, all right. If you say it works, then it works. Um, it doesn't have a movement on them. It has that they have HP, AC, attack, strength, and dex, but it doesn't have a movement speed on them, so I genuinely don't know how far they can move. Um, uh, standard movement's like 30, 35. For coins? Well, <laughs> if they have little legs, and I mean... I guess. I don't, I don't know. Animate object. It, just, it doesn't say so. Spiders move pretty fast. I mean, give me one second. I'm just going to check the wording it's of true. the spell. But, uh... Yeah, it says, objects come to life at your command. Choose up to 10 non-magical objects within range which is 120 feet that are not being worn or carried. Medium targets count as two objects, etc. I'm using tiny objects. Each target animates and becomes a creature under your control until the spell ends or until reduced by zero to zero hit points. As a bonus action, you can mentally command any creature you made with the spell if the creature is within 500 yeah. feet of you. Blah, blah, blah. You decide it's, what action. Its speed is 30 feet. Yeah. Does it its speed is 30 feet. Yeah. Really? So they can, yeah, so they can make it. Okay. Well, then I'll throw them and then they move. Yeah. All right. Cool. Oh, good. Um, all right. So then that's 47 damage as the coins attack him because uh... I rolled 25 to hit. What? Okay, what's the, uh, yeah, what were the rolls? 25 to hit, 13 to hit, 10 to hit, 19 to hit, 11 to hit, 26 to hit, 18 to hit, 16 to hit, 28 to hit, 21 to hit. So that's three misses, the 13, the 10, yep. and the 11 with the AC of 16. Uh, that, that's, eight. Uh, the, the jester is going to be an AC of 18. I'll just give it to you. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Because Amonis okay, was attacking it. one of the uh, the tinier ones. Got Does okay, he also well, have um, disadvantage? Uh, no, not on the jester. Ah. 39 damage. All right. As another one misses. Perfect. Anything else on your turn? No, I would like to resume full cover and having screamed, I'm so sorry, take my money. <laughs> hide behind the table. All That's my right. turn. All right. Oh, so the jester is like wailed on by these, these, I'm assuming you threw the fake gold coins or you threw the actual gold coins? Real gold coins. Okay, so it's being wailed on by gold, and he laughs a bit, like, <laughs> well, this is new. I've never been attacked by money. Money has hurt me before, though. I mean, not so directly, but it has. Anyway, ugh. Uh, and he'll just snap his, fi- one of, uh, snap his fingers, and one of the little fairy folk is going to zip behind the table, because you had, like, peeked out and thrown something and screamed, uh, and it will... Attempt three attacks on you. Oh, schnei. Okay, so there's a second half of the spell that was on the back side of the page. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when spell books exist in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Backs of pages. So one of those attacks is going to land. So uh, it like shivs you with uh, one of his little daggers for eight piercing damage. Who? Uh, but then the second one, like, he comes to attack with his, his second hand and uh, it stumbles. Yeah, you again. Me? me? Behind the table? Yeah, he well, had the person zip out and get you. Oh. Uh. One, one shivs you, but then it stumbles. You could tell like, it was, like, trying to go so fast that it stumbles with the other one. It's unable to make its third attack, and it just starts to zip away. How much damage do they do total? Uh, just eight. Just the eight piercing. Okay. You can make an attack of opportunity, if you'd like. I don't have any weapons, so I can't. You okay? 
Can a spell be an attack of opportunity? If nope. she has the feet for it. But you have staffs? You said you could whack him in the forehead. Nope. Pitch can't. Okay. You know in Doctor Who how the doctor only has the screwdriver and appears totally harmless? But he's actually <laughs> the like deadliest creature in the universe? That's Pidge. She doesn't have any weapons. Yeah. All right. And then the third one that's still standing is going to zip around and go once again for a monist. Uh, okay. Having downed one of its friends. The disadvantage being negated by uh, yep. the fact that you're blind. Yep. And only one is going to hit, so another shiv for eight damage. Alrighty. Same thing, it zips by, and it's like it's too fast for its own good, and it only managed to get one. Uh, Do I get an attack of opportunity? Uh, you already used it, I believe, last time. Oh, you only get one, okay. It's your reaction, so it's only one per round, yeah. And uh, that puts us at the top of initiative. So, Stephen. All right. I'm going to start uh, asking Lady Diana to gallop towards the Jester. Yep. And thing that I should have done on my first turn, uh, I will quickly reach for my holy symbol, which is my belt buckle. It's like a shiny, big pink diamond. And I'll send a quick prayer to my uh, big guy upstairs. And I will try to turn the Fateless. Uh, so every fey, uh, fiend or fey, so I'm, I'm guessing they're all fey, within 30 feet of me will have to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Uh, so that would be the jester and the one that zipped to the back. Okay. And your DC is? 15, right? Yeah, 15. Uh, you can tell that they're both resisting it. Ah, uh, no. They're both like stealing their resolve and they're like, <laughs> no tricks, no, no, no tricks. I'm sorry. Tricks are mine, not yours. That's fine. I'll still uh, keep galloping and get... I want to get within melee range of the Jester, sure. so I'm close to the guy. And using my bonus action, I'll take one of my third level spell slots, and I will cast Branding Smite, so my Morning Star starts glowing big radiant pink energy. Yeah. And I'm within melee range of the guy. Yeah. And is that your turn? Uh, yeah, that is my turn, and Diana still had an action because she just moved, so she's going to take the dodge action just so she can defend herself if she gets stabbed. Okay, perfect. And it is Amonist's turn. All right, and I can now reach the Jester, correct? Yeah, you could uh, You could move forward. All right, so I'm going to attack him, because then my shots don't miss. And since, and you said his AC was 18? Yes. Perfect. I hit all of those. I got a 30, 28... 24 and 22. And then let me just add up the damages here. And one of those was a critical. Okay. But wait, that was damage? No, no, that th those are those are the ro rolls to hit. Oh, okay, 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 perfect. And what's the damage? 11 plus 10 plus 7 plus 9 plus 18 plus 16. 81. Sweet lord. Jeez. <laughs> I'm very good at that. Okay, then. It takes it. You could tell, like, that was a really big blow. Um, you could tell, like, blood starting to spatter a bit from his uh, from his mouth. Yeah, take that. All <laughs> right. It is, now, it is now his turn. And the beginning of the turn, he's going to just still floating almost in air, turn upside down, look at both you and Steven, and just wiggle his finger and point right. Uh, and you both need to make either an intelligence or wisdom saving throw. Uh, Steven and who? Is that... Ma it is not a spell. It is an ability. It's not a spell. Uh, Amonis, you're next to me, though, so you still get to add plus three to that save. Okay. So oh. you said wisdom or intelligence? Yes. Yeah. 22. And 20 for me. All right. You feel the urge almost to start like running off in a direction, but you, you manage to fight it and, uh, and stay in, the, stay in place. Ooh, be feared. Hmm. This isn't good. This isn't good. I'm surrounded. What should I do? Ah, I know. I'll chime. And he quickly lops back upright. All of his bells chime at once. And I need everything around him, so Amonist, Steven, and all of the objects to make constitution saving throws. Okay. Do I still get your plus three? 
Always. Do yeah. my objects get your plus three? Uh, if they're within ten feet, yeah. Okay, they don't have constitution scores. Um, uh, it says its constitution oh, is its 10. its constitution is ten. There's the second page. Eighteen. I got a twenty again. Do uh, I add three to it? Because... Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm writing these down. Because I'm magic and shiny. Yay. And, and did you say he was moving away? I'll get to that in just a second. Oh, okay. I have Sorry. 10 constitution saves for you. Uh, are they... Whichever ones are over... Are 16 or more is fine. That's three of them. Okay. So everybody who made the save... You take half damage, which will be 15 thunder damage. So it's just sound that comes out of the bells. Okay. Everything that failed its save takes a full 30. Oh. Okay. Okay, so then I have three remaining coins, is what you're saying. And as that sound comes out, reverberates through you, dealing damage, like it just shatters through your being, the jester disappears and reappears near where you came in, so near the doorway originally, which near would now be pitches. near where pigeons, uh, which would be like 15 feet away from uh, 50 feet, sorry, away from uh, Stephen and the monist. Okay, and side note, I maintain concentration on my smite spell. Yep, perfect. Awesome. Uh, and that's its turn. Uh, so now the little fay that was in the corner first behind the jester, now on its own is going to zip forward and seeing how well Amonist bashed its master's head in is going to go in for three attacks. I'll do the first one with disadvantage just to see. Yeah, so I'm I'm guessing your AC is not 26. No. (laughs) All right, that's three hits, actually. So 24 piercing damage total as it stabs at you lightning fast with its daggers. I'm starting to feel weak. And then it's going to zip away back to where it was in the back corner. Okay. Do you want to make an attack of opportunity? Oh, yes, of course. And it's at disadvantage, correct? Yeah, with disadvantage. Uh, 22 to hit. Oh, it definitely hits. 17 damage. All right, you slice it once again. This time, because you had not specified non-lethal, you actually, like, slash it completely uh, with, like, blue blood coming out of it, and it falls to the floor. Oh. And you can hear the jester, like, one of my subjects. I mean, I have more. So uh, I guess it's part of the game, part of the game. It's fun, people. It's fun. Continue. Whoa. Doesn't even care that their friend died? That's... (laughs) <laughs> they, are not, they are not a fire breathing kitten <laughs> yeah and it is Pidge's turn alright Pidge can see the king yep very well okay alright and they're within 60 feet of me yep definitely please make a dexterity saving throw Hey. ooh that is 13 my spell save DC is 17. So Pidge sees you not caring about your friend dying and says, you don't deserve to rule. A thin green ray springs from my pointing finger to a target that I can see within range. Oh my God. The target can be a creature, an object. A creature targeted by this spell must make a deck saving throw. On a failed save, the target takes 10d6 plus 40 force damage. That's 82. 82? Yeah. Did that reduce you to zero hit points? How would you like to describe the disintegration of the jester? A disintegrated creature and everything it is wearing and carrying, except magic items, are reduced to a pile of fine gray dust. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you because it's it's done, it's dead. So if you want to personalize it, you can. <laughs> nah. Uh, if you don't care about your friends, you don't deserve to rule. Is what I say. All right. Stephen thinks that's a bit much, but he agrees with that. Yeah. And the um, so the the green uh, the green beam spouts out from your finger and it whacks the jester right in the chest. Uh, I'd like to do an intimidation check against the rest of the room. Sure, go ahead. Uh, Would anyone else like to continue to fight? I fail my save, so I'm afraid. <laughs> I think you get advantage on this. Oh, I'm not. I'm not even making her roll. Like this is auto success, <laughs> auto crit. 
just down my boss, uh, which I was concerned about. <laughs> I'm I'm just imagining Pidge like holding the finger up and like <laughs> anybody else. <laughs> And they I'm not all... a monster, so if they if they give up, I, I don't disintegrate them. But, uh... I'm very jealous of your damage output right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Like my my morning star is still shining with the smite ready, and I'm like, okay, well. What's super cool is that I can animate objects and disintegrate. So that would have been fifty plus eighty two, you guys. Fifty plus eighty two. Uh... Ah. All right, just keep going. <laughs> They all they all actually stand down. They're not having it. It's it's no 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 no. And you, you can tell and they, they start like fluttering and flickering. They're like ah, ah, oh, we're sorry, we're sorry, we're sorry. No no no. It was just a game. Speech time. Just, just a game. Speech time. We are the fire breathing kittens, I say to them, and I stand up atop the table because I'm a little gnome. The way that we party is that no one dies. I think I'm in the Fey Realm, but if you guys ever want to come hang out with us in Nikamoy we won't kill you, and we, we will care if our underlings are hurt. Amonist, Steven, come here. Let's all get healed, and everyone who's injured, come here, and let's heal you too. And I touch my necklace and get good berries, and I'm going to give one to Amonist to demonstrate. I eat it. Everyone come here and get some berries, and let's just chat. Right, how many of these berries do you get? 20. Everyone can have one. Oh, wow. It's a gesture of goodwill. Oh, Each one only heals one HP, though. Yeah. I know, but I I was ready to like heal myself and let the others enjoy the berries if they're injured more than I. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, uh. How many of these really fast blue things are left? Uh well, as the jester disintegrates, um <laughs> you still see the three the three that were still there and then their their nine uh no, not the nine, the eight ones that had because there were 12 originally and some of them yeah. had disappeared so the other eight reappear uh and they just kind of like scooch forward for the first time you see them moving very slowly and they just kind of come get your berry you can have it this is for you pick it out of your hand and start eating like almost like a squirrel type of uh, type of reaction <laughs> there there thank you the, 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 thank you so much and you had uh, Nick, uh, actually Stephen still has the uh, the heckler on his shoulder, who is Ugh. laughing, laughing, <laughs> and he's wailing and waving his arms so much, and he's crying like you can, like you you know that your armor might rust if you don't wipe it off fast enough after this. Like, okay, well I'll try to get him off, but he's, he's is he still like. Oh no, like an illusion, or can I get him as, off? As you gesture, like the the floating his floating figure follows your hand and it just like plops in front of your face. I'm like, oh <laughs> that was great. <laughs> that was amazing. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. I never expected it to go so well. <laughs> okay, side note, when I tried to turn Faye, did he make the save? Because I would like him to be 30 feet away from me. <laughs> but uh, it did. It did make the save, sadly. Of course it the, did. The, heckle, the heckler you will learn about uh, imminently. <laughs> uh, and so... Uh, if, if, if you like, I can tell you I can tell you a bit more about, um, about well, our departed friend now. <laughs> and it, the heckler just floats up to the pile of ash, grabs a couple of things that were amongst <laughs> the ashy colorfulness that is still there. Oh, no, wait, it's actually gray. It's specified by the spell. Uh, there is no more color. Uh, mm -hmm. And we'll plop them out on the table and just, like, lands there and says, well, you see, some some time ago, actually, um, this figure appeared, um, so who you just met, Nikolai, uh, claiming to be an adventurer from another land. Uh, but as... Do you... Does any of you know about beholders at all? Yes. Oh, that's what it was. Oh. oh. Okay, so you you know about them. Do you do you happen to know <laughs> how 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 they reproduce? No. They Let, dream. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yes, the wizard is a smart one. So they I've dream studied. of themselves. <laughs> it shows. 
So they dream about themselves, and, well, what this particular person told us when they got here is actually one day in a dungeon somewhere far away, a beholder saw a jester. And as it was dreaming that night, it imagined itself as an adventurer, jester, roaming the land, doing its thing, and, well, I guess this came into existence because of it. And we've been actually having a really hard time getting rid of it. <laughs> Thank you so much. And he kind of, like, starts to grovel in front of Pidge. <laughs> Well, your ruler should never command you to die for them. I, I, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> yeah, I guess I, I... I'm glad I got to see the disintegrate in the end. That was a little bit intense, but... I mean, if it was a beholder, I guess it deserved it. Kind of ironic. They have disintegration race as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so I, I guess I'll reluctantly turn to the heckler. So now, who's going to rule you guys? Oh, we'll find somebody. The Fae always find somebody. I guess we'll just wait until somebody pops up. That's what we did last time. Pidge clears her throat. And that worked so well. How many Fae are there? Are you? you? How many Total. are you? In the guild or just Fae in, in general? In the guild. Oh, Just oh. in the guild. Well, I'd say at least 50. Well, 50 seems like a lot. Why don't you organize, like, I don't know, on the first Monday of every November... A poll that everyone could vote on, and you could make decisions with a little bit of direct democracy, and rule yourselves. Listen to the smart wizard. She's got a point. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I do like the idea of trying to teach the Fae some sort of structure. <laughs> I guess, I guess, I guess it would be fun to watch it. You know, <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe strive for a few times and fail and start again. That's a good idea. If you want a different system, that's fine too. It's just an idea. I know you're pretty chaotic. Maybe you might all enjoy voting. Maybe not. Just. Give it a try. I don't really care. <laughs> I mean, the Fae at large are royalty-based. Hmm. Let's... I guess we could start by pulling straws. <laughs> That's one way to do it. We'll find out. Let's see. Do you, do you want these things? Because, I mean, they were his, but now that he's gone, no point for me keeping them. What are they? Oh, right. There, there must be stuff in the, in the pile of dust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A little morbid laughter from Pidge. <laughs> Of all yeah, the ways I expected um, to give loot, this is not it, but it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you see, actually, you there is there are three kisus, and there is one bell, and on this the, the bell is made from a, a metal that seems like gold, and it etched on it is one four two. Hmm. Now. <laughs> well, Weren't there you see, 142 invitations that are sent out. Yeah, mm -hmm. interesting. Well, ooh, good memory. Yeah, this, th this was actually the 142nd bell, but I mean, one of the invitations didn't need a bell. I don't know what happened there. I guess two people used the same bell or stole it from one another, maybe. <laughs> so I guess I'll just give you the spare one. Okay, does it do anything? Now, it will allow us to come back to your realm, right? Well, I mean, our realm, we, we like to travel a lot. So maybe not specifically to our realm, but um, let's see. And he's just going to wave his hand and tap the bell. Well, you see, now if, if you put it on a door and you open the door, you'll be able to go to your own little private 30-foot room. Oh, okay. That's nifty. That's interesting. What do the harmonicas do? Uh, so the the kazoo's actually a little gift oh. from me to you. <laughs> so you get one, you get one, you get one. Well, you know, if if you want to see somebody potentially fail miserably and laugh about it, you just point at them and blow, and I'll appear <laughs> to heckle them down. I'll send stats for the heckler. Okay. Ugh. Whoa, a monist. <laughs> You were so sad when you found out. Oh, it wasn't a monist. It was me. I'm like, uh, oh, so I'll, oh. I'll get to see him again. <laughs> Yay. What a great present. 
<laughs> I mean, I I never look down on a present, and I never disagree with a new friend. But ugh, it'll be good to see you again. Especially when you don't know how to get home. Um, <clears throat> be polite. <laughs> right, there's that too. Oh, wait, wait, wait! Follow me, follow me, follow me. And uh, he he goes up to the wall from where uh, from where you entered, waves a bit, and a door appears, leading you back into the um, the artist's studio. He's going to go up to the pile of gold and say, Oh, let's see. I feel like I haven't given you enough. Um, how's about... And he, he waves. There. Um, well, I could only manage to make 24,000 of them become real gold. Whoa. That's already something. I mean, not each. You have to divide it. <laughs> and here. To get out, let's see. Just use these. And he's going to go up to the... Uh, the, the painter's essel, get uh, four pots of paint, lay them down in front of you and say, these, I don't know if you're familiar, one of my favorites, to be honest, um, Nistel's Marvelous Pigments. So you could use one pot to get home, to make a door, and you can either get one pot each or keep them all for yourselves and fight over it. <laughs> one pot each, guys? Yeah. Yeah, one, one pot each, and... The divided 24,000 would be 8,000 each. Sounds great. Nice. So I wrote down... Oh, and also, um, there's the there's still the portable hole. Um, is it all right if I keep it? I think it'll be helpful to carry uh, Lady Diana around if I need I was, to. <laughs> like, in a, like in a dungeon or I something. I was thinking that. We, we, we have two areas of portable dimensions now. You should definitely keep at least one of them. Um just okay. because you do have some bulky things to carry. All right, so I'll keep the... I don't know what's best. Like, um, I, I, I don't have the stats in front of me, so, like, can Lady Diana breathe in the portable uh, hole? It's, it's the same thing as a bag of holding, so it's... Ten, no. There is oh, sorry. 10 minutes of so, air. So, like, 10 minutes. Yeah, there's 10 minutes of air divided okay. amongst the number of people that are in the hole. Okay, and with the little room from the bell, I guess we can breathe in there? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that... that um, <laughs> I'll send, I'll send you the stats, so can I but trade? mechanically, you attach the bell to a door. When you open the door, it casts the spell Demiplane. But it, oh, okay. always, All right. it always goes back to the same one. You can't create a new one, like with the spell. Okay, you might want okay. that one. So, so, yeah, so I'll trade the, whoever wants the portable hole here, and I'll take the bell. Amonis, you can have the portable hole. Okay, I, was, I don't know if it does either of us any, good, any more good than the other. Um... Yeah, add that add that to your arsenal. Um, Pidge could probably use it as insta cover, I guess. Do you want it? Ooh, sure. It's yours. And then the the pot of paint oh, allows right. you to make a door to anywhere. Uh, it's the pot of paint lets you paint yeah, anything. You can paint anything. Literally, and it becomes and it's, real. It's, yeah, it, it's Looney Tunes at its best. Like, uh, it's and long though. It's a long process. It takes a few minutes, but it works. And the, the pot of paint is uh, a single use? Yes. Okay. Oh, it's a single use? I thought you could cover like a certain surface with it, but maybe these are smaller pots, oh, though. Oh, no. Uh, I thought... Give me just one second. Just to check. Magical pigments. Because you can, you can yeah, cover so like a, if you paint a certain surface. Yeah. Cause, so you have a surface with it. From what I remember from my gnomish studies, by the way, this is not metagaming. And... Um, yeah, you can cover a surface. So, like, if you paint just a bunch of small things, like a screwdriver or a little toothbrush, then you can paint a lot of these things. But if you want to <gasps> paint, like, a castle, then you might need a couple of pots. I can paint things to attack people with animate objects. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so just paint them before the fight starts, because you won't have time to, like, sketch ten toothbrushes. But, I mean, it takes it takes ten minutes to cover ten, well, 100 square feet, so... Okay. All right. Never mind. It's, oh, it's pretty fast. <laughs> I'll just throw pocket coins again, or hope there's a candy wrapper in the room. I mean, it, it would go pretty fast if you just want like one cubic feet filled with ten coins. It's like ick paint. I'd say it works. Yeah, and it's cool. Now we'll be able to work on our brushing since we're not all elves who know how to paint. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just teasing. It these fairies, they're bad influences on me. I can't help it that I. And I know how to paint. Did did you? So maybe one time you can paint me as one of the of those Nicomore women. Oh my! Whoa! <laughs> I would 
love that. I I was so excited to get Leonardo Cibenci to get my portrait, and then that didn't happen. So I'm kind of disappointed now. Not disappointed. I'll find up other opportunities. Leonardo <laughs> Cibenci, who is still in the room, by the way. It has not been eight hours. Oh, Are you going to make a mannequin of yourself? Maybe not. I mean, we already have to carry mannequin pitch back to the to the thing. There's only so much. Oh, wait, I have we you have a portable hole now. So yeah, we could have a bunch of mannequins of us if we want. You can take the paint with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm, I'm definitely taking the paint. Yeah. Oh, right. Because it was he was painting from those. Yep. So um, <laughs> did you have did you have any questions? Do you have any interrogations? Anything at all? Something I can do for you? Why did you guys bring us here? I mean, it's always been it's always been a tradition of the Toad Corps to to have people come in. Usually, it's a little more you know fun filled and frolicking than stabbing. <laughs> but... <laughs> okay, so it was the Beholder's idea to have us fight. Yeah, right. this specific creature was a little more ill intended than uh, our usual masters are. Ah. Mm -hmm. So I hope you do find a good master or whatever system you decide to use to find the next ruler. I'm honest. Do you want to be king of the fae? <sighs> Toad mm -hmm. choir master? Mm -hmm. Director of the orchestra of fae? They seem a little... Would he have to give up being a f fire breathing kitten, though, to join another guild as the master? This sounds like a big commitment. And these fae seem a little scattered. <laughs> no. We're so organized. <laughs> You'd have to hang out with him. <laughs> I'm good. I already yeah. have a harmonica that summons, or kazoo that summons him. Uh, uh. You don't want to be king of the Toad Choir. Um, I'll be. I'll be a distant overlord. They can. They can come to me with problems when when something arises. Oh, if you guys ever need someone to overthrow a bad leader, you know who to come to. If they start making you kill one another oh. or other people. Yeah, do we have bit? Do we have business cards for the Fire Breathing Skin Kins Guild? Because I would hand them one. Like, call us any time if another Beholder shows up, or like, I don't know, a Mind Flayer next time. Like, we'll we'll be ready. The business cards have a shield with a Fire Breathing Kitten on it. Ooh, thank you. Awesome. I hand them one of that. <laughs> I'll be sure. I'll be sure to send a message <laughs> if anything comes up. Yeah, if you ever need help, we're here for you. So I guess now the only question is, how do we get home? I mean, one of the pots of paint will do that for you if you make a door to your oh. guild or to your city or oh, right. wherever it is you want to go. If you want to go to the beach, by all means, make a door to there. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll get some of my, some of my paint. Um, all I know is finger painting, so I'll dip my <laughs> finger in the pot and I will quickly sketch a doorway. I'll make it gnome size so I can save a little bit more of my pigment and I'll make a doorway that leads us to the beach, because that sounds like a neat idea. Awesome. Ooh, I love beaches. Yay, beach trip. You know, guys, I live in Nicomore. I've been living in Nicomore for a while, and I haven't seen the beach oh yet. Oh my gosh. So I'm kind of excited. Oh, we'll take you. There's probably a lifeguard on duty now. It's like midsummer. Yeah. Ooh. All right, let's go. Yeah. Yay. Uh, I would like to take Pidge Mannequin with me, just for the record. <laughs> Sure, Lady Diana will carry Pidge Mannequin for Thank you. Thank you. Do you leave Leonardo Cibinci with the heckler for what's left of his life? Yes. You guys should no, be friends. No, let's take oh, him. Okay. He should finish his life on the beach looking at the sunset. To be fair, yeah, that's a good way to end end it all. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, come with us. Leonardo Cibinci, would you prefer to hang out with the heckler or be on the beach? And he just extends his little chibi arms to you. Like a baby wanting a hug. Ah, Stephen picks him up. <laughs> yeah, I'll take Chibinchi. I'll put him on my shoulder, throw a look at the heckler, because I very much prefer that company. <laughs> and then let's all go to the beach. Yeah, when he deanimates, he can be a statue. Looking at the beach forever. Yeah. Aww. Aww. Like a garden gnome. Yep. But of a little. Aw, Amonis, you obtained Leonardo Chibinchi, garden gnome. Cool. <laughs> So you open the door out to the beach. You pop out from what would be one of those like wooden changing rooms, I'm I'm assuming. So the door just opens and nice. you're just coming out onto the beach with uh, Lady Di in tow and uh, Chibinchi on your shoulder. Yay! Well, people on the beach must think something really weird was going on in that room. 
<laughs> Three <laughs> people a and a it. horse. <laughs> I had a mannequin. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing weird here. Don't Three people, mind a horse, us. and a mannequin walk into a changing room. <laughs> it's like one of those clown cars where there's just first there's a gnome and you're like okay that's normal and then there's a second gnome you're like how, were they both in there together then a elf appears and then a horse <laughs> and you're like this looks a lot like Germany <laughs> and I don't know what that meant you don't he does <laughs> you spend you spend the rest of the day relaxing on the beach after this very odd day of trials and disintegration and as the sun begins to set, the magic begins to wear off, and Chibinchi turns solid. Aww. And that's where we'll end. Aww. Woot! That was a very cute ending. Well, thank you so much, everybody. I guess it's time to say bye and thank you to Amonist. Bye. To Pidge. Don't tolerate tyrants. And to Steven. Bye, Chibinchi. I love you so much. Well, thanks, everybody, for listening. Take care. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening to this episode of the Fire Breathing Kittens podcast. You can find more adventures on Amazon.com in the bookstore, Fire Breathing Kittens, all one word, podcast. That's right. You can curl up with a good book based on one of our podcast episodes. The authors do a really great job of adapting them into fun novels. And did you know that we have webcomics? Look for the adventures of fire-breathing kittens on webtoons.com. We also have official merchandise on redbubble.com. Yes, that's right. You really can own a notepad with the fire-breathing kitten logo on the front. Or one of your favorite characters. Go to redbubble.com and search for works from your favorite characters such as Frath, Amonist, Azrine, and more.